911, Major Majesty. My friend's been shot and killed. Hello? Hi, my friend's been shot and killed. I can't hear you, sir. Could you say that again? My friend's been shot and killed. Okay, what's the address? It's Pinecrest, 39. 39 Pinecrest, and it just yes. happened? Yes. Okay, and he's there now? Uh, me and his roommate. Okay, and you said he was shot? Yeah, we're sitting outside and got shot in front of me. Okay, and that was 39 Pinecrest, correct? Yes. And is he bleeding? He got shot in the head, he's dead. Okay. I'm getting him around to you, okay? Yeah. Is the suspect still there? I don't know. We were outside and someone shot. We didn't see anybody. Okay. We didn't see anybody. Okay. Where's your friend at now? He's sitting outside. I ran inside. Okay. Hold on for me. In the early hours of Wednesday, October 28th, 2015, at approximately 1 a.m., the Bluffton, South Carolina Police Department received a distress call regarding a male who had suffered a gunshot wound to the head. Swiftly, officers and paramedics were dispatched to the scene. Upon arrival, they tragically found the lifeless body of the individual, later identified as Jonathan Cheryl. Jonathan, a beloved restaurant owner in the Bluffton community, had met a shocking demise that sent ripples of disbelief through the town. During their investigation, the police discovered two expended 12-gauge double-aught buckshot shells and an ominous footprint near the vicinity of the house. Moreover, surveillance footage from cameras directed at Jonathan's residence became crucial evidence. An acquaintance of Jonathan, who was present at the time of the shooting, recounted that a woman had visited their door earlier that fateful night. Authorities were keen to establish the identity of this mysterious visitor. Upon reviewing the security footage, it became evident that the woman and Jonathan shared a seemingly amicable interaction. Intriguingly, the footage also revealed her returning to the scene, driving by Jonathan's house at a slow pace on two separate occasions. The second occurrence coincided with the estimated time of the fatal shooting. As the investigation unfolded, police took a critical step in their pursuit of answers. After running the license plates of the vehicle seen in the surveillance footage, they determined that it belonged to Colette Collins, a friend of Jonathan's. This discovery led law enforcement to the decision that it was imperative to bring her in for questioning at the police station, marking a pivotal moment in their quest for clarity surrounding Jonathan Cheryl's tragic demise. <laughs> So you've already met? Uh, well, not officially. Okay. Angela. Hi, Angela. Nice to meet you. And uh, like I said, I'm Ted Devotum. You can call me Baker. That's my first name. And uh, I'm not sure what they told you when they went out and caught you just now. I I can assume what it's about what whenever he said it was happened Tuesday night. What was that? That my friend got shot and killed. Nice. And I was just there at his house. I let, I got off work and I went over there. It's just so, so surreal what's going on. I don't even know what, I don't know what fate. Well, one thing that I do need to do real quick before we get started talking about anything, and it's, when you watch the movies, this happens when somebody's under arrest. It's not the way it works in the real world. We always have to read your rights at a time before we get talking too much. That's just the way it works. But people always get worried what it means. But it's just because anytime we talk to people, ask questions, we got to do it. Okay? So if you want to read this with me while I read it to you, uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney for advice before we ask you any questions. If you can't afford an attorney, won't be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer any questions now without an attorney, you will still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. Uh, and if you want to read those last two out loud, and it's just initial. You right. also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to an attorney. Oh, okay. Do you understand each of these rights I have explained to you? Yes. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? Yes. Okay. If you just initial down next to each of those, and then next to the yeses. So the last time you... Psalm was that night? That night. 
about what time did you remember that? Probably about 10, 9 30, 10, I guess. Well, that takes me like 40, 45 minutes to get into the south area because it's all the way out of Beaufort. And, and where do you work? Secession. Secession. It's like Ladies Island okay. area. You gotta go over two bridges. Um, then I wanted to stop by because I hadn't seen him since he had his DUI. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go check up on him. I know he's been suffering from depression and the restaurant closing and everything. And, it, it, you know, I've gone through the same types of things with depression and suicidal thoughts and actually attempts. And so I went over there to check up on him, and he was doing good. He had a, a peel mask on, and he was in his room. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I called him like at an all time. A facial. He had a facial on, and um, we just sat outside and talked. And we just talked. Did he know you were coming by? No, no. he didn't know. He didn't know. Decided to surprise him. I yeah. I was on the way home, and I was like, I'm passing his house. So I'm just gonna stop by. Cause I don't. I don't think we've ever really communicated over the phone. It's mm -hmm. just like I'll see him, or he'll come by my house and we'll hang out or whatever or whatnot. It was How long have you been since you've seen him before that? Maybe a couple of weeks. Okay. Like ten days, not even like a whole long time. How do you know him? I know him from Peppers. Mm -hmm. We used to go up there because we're right down the road from Peppers. So we be my husband and I and we would go to the back bar, mm -hmm. and that's how we met John. And then whenever it became, well, it was Jack's, and then it was Pepper's. But he was there throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so we met him at the back bar and just clicked. Like, he, I, I can't even forget his birthday because he's, like, literally two months and nine days off for my birthday. And we were talking about how, you know, same generation, you know, same stuff, we're kidding about know, different colors, Converse, and stuff like that. That's about it. You know, we just got along. He was in the restaurant business. He was trying to get me to come there and work. And then I was like, ah, I don't think you can afford me. So, and What do you want you to do over there? Bartend. Okay. I need to bartend. That's about it. I mean, we really didn't have that close of a relationship. He was just someone that I could talk to. What about he and your husband? How was their relationship? They had a good relationship. Yeah, I mean, at first they were better friends than he and I were. And then I don't know if my husband just started getting jealous of him and I, like, hanging he, he out. You mentioned the whole Facebook thing led to jealousy. <laughs> yeah, that was way before any of this. But, yeah, he, he, he you know, he gets jealous. But so I was like, okay. And that's why he doesn't know I went over there that night. Mm -hmm. He's went at the house. I'm like, what is it? Because I don't want him to get upset with me for going over there, mm -hmm. you know. And Do you and John have an intimate relationship? No. no. Have you ever? No. Not even once? Well, like the closest contact we've ever done is a hug. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did anybody else stop by while you guys... While you were there, mm -hmm. anybody else at the house? While you were there, I don't know. I I mean, I know his dog was there. He said someone was inside, but I don't know who it was. We she just never sat out. Went in. Never went in. We just sat right outside, and my car was parked in the driveway, and we were both just kind of leaning up against it. Mm -hmm. How long were you there? Honestly, I could I don't even remember how long I was there. It could have been thirty minutes. It could have been an hour. What all did y'all talk about? We just talked about, you know, his restaurant, his parents, what he plans on doing next. You know, because we keep telling him, I'm like, just because this one closed doesn't mean another restaurant's going to come open. Because that, you know, was a big, that really hurt his ego and, you know, got him upset. And I just, I don't like seeing people upset like that. I knew that he could do it. He was stronger. He's young. He's got 
so much support his parents and his friends and so we were just talking about you know how he's selling stuff off out of the restaurant so he can get some money and and move forward that was you know that was it I mean we didn't talk about we never really talked about having we flirted but it never you know went too far and how did he seem I mean and I ask you this because I know he's been using a little bit more. Yeah, and that's another thing that brings, you know, cause of concern because the time prior before I saw him, it was at um, a friend's house and he was there and he could barely walk. And it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon mm-hmm. and he's getting in his car. And then it was another week goes by, the accident happened. And so I was like, okay, he's getting in deep. It's like spiraling out of control now. So, that, you know, I stopped by. We just talked about that and tried to give him some words of encouragement, you know, and calm him down. Give me a hug. I'm here for you. You know, if you ever need anything, you can call me right down the road. Like, he's played with my son. We all get along. And then I didn't hear about what happened until last night whenever I got home from work and I was just like how'd you find out what uh the WTOC app Mm -hmm. I have on my phone and it said uh Bluffton police were called out to 39 Pinecrest Way and I was like 30 39 Pinecrest Way and like wait a second and then there was this picture I don't know if I just, like, compartmentalized everything and still don't want to think that it's true. But sitting right here, yeah, it's, it's so happened. And I'm just, I just, I don't, I don't know what. Have you ever been there before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's been there when you've been there before? Um, there was his maid was there one time. So she claimed she was his maid, but I don't know who she really was. Mm-hmm. And then just him and his dog. Was she, was she cleaning when she was there? She had on cleaning clothes, I guess, and her hair was back, and she was kind of like sweeping and taking care of the dog mainly, but I wasn't there for what like was five minutes. It was like around lunch one day or something. Lunch-ish. When we were... Um, we were at your house, so I didn't notice you guys had surveillance cameras all over the house. Yeah. What, what is that all about? They were there before. They don't even work. They don't work. Mm-hmm. They that don't work. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, we Paranoid got... Paranoid or... We illegal. got into... So, you know, there's two different, right. two different trains of thought. Well, yeah, they don't work. They haven't worked since we've been living there mm-hmm. for the last couple of years. The people that were there before us mm-hmm. had all of that put up. And when we, you know, you know they don't work. Do y'all rent? We do rent. Who do you rent from? Paul Lane. He's out of Atlanta. Out of Atlanta. But uh, whoever it was before, because when we were moving in, they still had stuff there. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of stuff there. And um, they were moving cross country or something. And so we were like, okay, well, if you want us to move this stuff into the little you know, that building that was over there, we can keep it there. And if you come back, you can have it. And they never came back and got it. They just left. And so okay, stop it. Just like weird, random housewares, George Foreman grills, a uh, Oak bar, couch, just their stuff. They have stuff in the refrigerator, food. Your parents live there with you? Yes. Yes. Let's um let's kinda of walk through the other night. You leave work. Mm-hmm. Tell me, you know, you stop at a gas station on the way home and I'm trying to, to gauge timing wise, you know, when you left, when you got there. Like what kind of time frame we're looking at. Maybe if you went somewhere after you left his house, 
I did whenever, well, okay, so I left work. Mm -hmm. I went, trying to think the route that I took, to take 170 to 278 Mm -hmm. and then turn on Buffalo, sir. Mm -hmm. And then I went, you know, and I was like, oh, I just saw the sign and I just thought of it. Mm -hmm. And I did have a drink, vodka drink, before I left work. Not going to lie. And, um, you know, so I had some emotions running and I wanted to see him. And so I stopped there before I went home. Because if I would have gone home, I wouldn't have been able to go out again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were just, I guess, talking. And then I I couldn't tell you how long it really was. I don't don't remember. I really don't remember. And then I left and I went and got two bottles of Pinot Noir. And from Parker's, Parker's. <laughs> <laughs> only place open from Parker's, and I know this is a bad call in judgment, but I did open that wine. My husband hasn't had a drink in over a year, mm-hmm. as of September first, and he doesn't like for me. I, you know, I don't right. want to bring it around him, mm-hmm. so I kind of rode around and drink on that bottle of wine mm-hmm. and I took the other bottle home mm-hmm. with me and like gave it to my mom because she drinks red wine. Yeah. Well, I brought your bottle of wine home. Yeah. And where did you ride around to? Uh, a little bit of, you know, just kind of staying close to home, mm-hmm. but 46 and the farm area and back through his neighborhood. Like, I think I went back through there maybe one time. And I had another friend that kind of went by her house to see if she was still living there. And Did you talk to her? No, no. I didn't stop and talk to her. It was way too late. She had the son with autism. I just, I had her phone number, and I was like, yeah, it's too late. But until that, you know, it was a small bottle. I don't even think I finished all of it. Which is been like, where the hell have you been? I mean. No. No. Because... He knows that sometimes I can get home at, like, midnight, depending on how late these members stay and eat. Right. And then we have to clean up everything, break down everything. And literally, it's so small and tight in that area mm-hmm. that our wine glasses, we clean them, and then they go back in boxes and put away. Cause we don't have anywhere to store them. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of extra work on top right. of what you're already doing. So my time frames are always, if I have one party, well, I got home at 930 and then 10.30. The latest I've clocked out of there is 11.30. Mm-hmm. And then the drive time, get home 12.15, 12.30. So, and our Verizon bill came in, and it was 800 and something mm-hmm. dollars. Oh, <sighs> Thank you, Hargrave, for not having our wireless work properly, because... Whenever my son comes home, he wants to get on the tablet and watch YouTube. Well, it wasn't hooked up to the wireless, so data, data, data. Wow. I think we had missed a month, too, so we were behind on the month. It was, it was about $400 a month. Yeah. So our phones were turned off, so I mm-hmm. couldn't even call anybody. It had been off for like two, three days. I don't it's a long time without phone. What day is it? These, these yeah. Days, it's a real long time. I know. I know. Um, when you said you were driving back and you left work 172, 78, and then you saw a sign that made you think about going, which sign are you talking about that you saw? The Pinecrest. The Pinecrest sign? Yeah. So at that point, you already decided you weren't going home yet. You were. Yeah. You were, you were, where were you going? You just drive? What were you doing? I was going to John's. It's so, so okay. So you yeah. already decided to. It wasn't the yeah. sign. You, you were going there. Well, I, I go home that way. I usually go all the way down Buckwalter okay. up to the light and turn left at 46. Okay, so you don't take 278 all the way down to Buck Island or anything? You know? I have. Okay. I mix it up. I got you. Yeah, okay. I mix it up. If the light is green, then I go. If it's red, I turn. <laughs> right. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Did he happen to mention any issues he was having? He's been having a lot of issues. And... I don't know who these people are. Mm-hmm. All I hear is that these black people, these black people, these mm-hmm. black people. And I don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. And I know there was like one guy 
that he was a little weary about that worked for him. He was all through Facebook, something that he posted on Facebook. And the guy had, like, a gun and, and you know, and, like, money or something trying to show off. And I heard that guy had come around. And whenever they were, like, getting rid of stuff because they had to come and get their last paychecks or something, mm-hmm. which I don't know if this is true or not. Mm-hmm. I, this is just what I heard from him. And this, that's all I keep hearing is that he owes money to whoever he's getting these pills from. Mm-hmm. And the habit was, like, so bad. We're like, that's why I'm worried about you. You can't do that many and mm-hmm. still even have a pulse right now. Right. So you think his habit was excessive? Very, very excessive. I mean, it would have to be hundreds of dollars day a day habit <sighs> what now um the bullet hole in the front glass in your place yeah what is that's been there, been there. that has been there since we moved in mm-hmm. i don't know how it happened who how long it's been there we just noticed it was taped up i got a quote for the glass mm-hmm. it was outrageous <laughs> so i said okay let me just go with it has your husband been shot before? He has been shot in Allendale, South Carolina. Allendale. Allendale, South Carolina. How long Carolina. ago was that? How long ago was that? Two years ago? Oh, so that didn't happen here. No, no, no. Well, that was, was a completely, like, separate thing that he was up there with one of his friends, mm-hmm. and his friends got into a mix with some bad friends, mm-hmm. and then guns come out, he runs, he didn't have a gun, he runs and mm-hmm. gets shot in the back of the leg. Did they ever find out who did it? I mean, the prosecution wants to know. Was it, so what was he been, doing over now and now? He was with one of his friends out exactly. there. Yeah, they were going out there for the weekend. I'm not quite sure exactly what they were doing. They were just hanging out. He has like a hunt. And they like to go hunt bow hunting and so he had some his friend had some land out there and then I guess it was late they went to the gas station there was like a gas one gas station in town and yeah, it was small. yeah. and I, I really I think it was like an attempted robbery mm-hmm. on what was going on they were because I google earthed it from where he was, and, like, we've got all these papers in where the helicopter picked him up and everything, and I'm looking at the road, so I Google Earthed it to see, and there's, like, some, you know, kind of housing projects right behind there, so. Let me ask you a question, and, and I'm not, I don't want you to feel like I'm interrogating you. On the street, there's. The word is that your husband may have been involved in some sales at some point in his past. In his past, yes. When did all of that stop? That stopped um, because we were also having some marital issues, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to come back unless it ceased. And that was in 2012. Were you all living down here then? We were living down here, and I had actually come across an old acquaintance, and, you know, and I was telling him about my situation and everything, and, you know, we were already, we had been intimate in the past, and Mm -hmm. then just seeing him brought up more stuff, Mm -hmm. and then he's like, you know what, you don't need to be in that environment. Right. And then just a couple months went by, you know, and I'm like, I want to break up the family, like, I see my husband, he's, you know, drinking a ton because I'm not there. And so we decided to work it out. But that was my one, you've got to stop everything. Was like, I don't want. Using and drinking or selling or what was his? A little bit of everything. everything. A little bit of everything. And I, that's whenever he decided to quit the drinking and everything. And now he's been sober for over over the year. Yeah, it took some steps 
to get in there. Right. But that, yeah, all stopped. Because I, I don't feel safe, or, you know, in being mixed up in any type of that, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, I've gone through cancer. I don't I don't want to have to deal with looking over my shoulder for mm-hmm. weird stuff. So, and my son in the house. So I went back to him and we worked it out and we did some counseling and, I mean, we had divorce papers drawn up right. and everything. So you're on the brink of, it's over. Yeah. So. Yeah. What What about as of late? Has anything weird been going on around the house or no. is he paranoid about anything? No. I mean, we had some, there's two houses. At the end, like going down the street, past, on the, past our house. Mm-hmm. One of them has been empty for a few months. The other one has been empty for a few years. And they had the whole house was furnished. Mm-hmm. So we, the neighbors and I, started noticing because stuff was getting stolen out of the yard, mm-hmm. and stuff was getting stolen out of our yard. And so we we have some motion lights. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Mm-hmm. We, we've got some lights up, but. Um, we would just hear things at night, mm-hmm. and we're like, what is that? go out. Someone was trying to steal the copper off of our AC unit. Yeah. Like, it was taken apart. Yes. Yeah. We're like, okay, but they didn't get anything. Mm-hmm. It's got to be someone close. Right. Or they're not in the right frame of mind. So we just kind of, like, screwed the thing back on and rigged it to where you would not be able to get it open. And then we had another, um, where that little shed is, there's a driveway. Mm -hmm. And we had an older hot water heater and another unit, an older unit, right there. And then it's gone. Right. So we've had some weird stuff going on. And I know it's not just with us, because I talked to the guy where his whole, it was a whole trailer of stuff stolen. Yeah. And the trailer was his. They took the trailer and everything. And so we've all just been kind of looking out for each other. Right. And then what is weird, what night was that? The other night, I went outside to go smoke a cigarette on the porch. I was in the house. And there's this white pickup truck. You can see the lights coming down the road. They're going really slow. Mm-hmm. So we're like, what is that guy doing? It looks like the truck that we, you know, heard was taking stuff. Well, come to find out, it was a neighbor down there, so we both stopped and talked, and he said that there was a vehicle that had come down and drove through his yard, mm-hmm. his backyard, and that he tried to stop them, and they took off. And so I was like, okay, well, you've got my number. If you want to you see anything, if I see anything, we'll let you know. Because he was like, are you having a party? I was like, no, there isn't anyone at our house, this is at like ten thirty at night. You know, I got to get Chase to school in the morning. It was. It's just weird. There has been some weird stuff. Like there were people squatting. There's another little turn off. They were squatting down there, so that made everyone uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think we called the cops one or two times when they came down there and kind of scurried them away because I think they were coming from. That neighborhood is best of you. Yeah, yeah, best of you. What uh, go about your husband? What does he do for work these days? He's just been doing subcontracting. He had to sell his landscaping business because he got injured with the gunshot, and so that he can't walk. So he hasn't been able to do a whole lot since. Right. Since so he all he is doing is getting the work because we still had a huge client base mm-hmm. when it happened, and so. He knows other landscapers, so we get the work and then sub it out to them. Gotcha. Well, what is his name? Sam. Colin. Colin. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Tuesday night. How many times you said you've been there one other time mm-hmm. before, and when do you think that was? Okay, let's see. That was, like, was it maybe like in a week? Was it before or after his little suicidal? It was like, after. After the suicidal issue. So yeah. before but before. But before the DUI. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how did you know where he lived? He told me. He told, yeah. he told me where he lived. 
did you know that he was living with somebody else? That somebody else lived there with him? That he said the his lawyer, mm-hmm. he would always go, my lawyer roommate or boss. Boss. Right. Yeah. Right. And then I think I, you know, I've never seen Voss there. Mm-hmm. And I know that he's done a lot for John and mm-hmm. helped him get out of, of instances. But um, I've never met Voss mm-hmm. before. So when you, you get there, you leave. Which way did you leave? Which way did you come in? Did you come in by the, the pool or did you come in? I did come in by the pool and turned in. Now I can't remember if I went out and went that way or if I went out and went that way. Is that alcohol? I can't even remember. So yeah. And you said you went back through the neighborhood again? Yeah. Well, I was kind of like, if you go out the one side, you can go right over to the farm. I rode around the farm mm-hmm. a little bit and came back across and rode around and then started heading home. When do you think the last time your husband talked to him was? Who, ha- who has a closer relationship, you or or your husband with John? My husband would talk to him more frequently. Mm-hmm. The last time he probably talked to him, I know him and I both saw him over at the friend's house, and Where that was, was that? before the suicidal stuff, before the DUI stuff, mm-hmm. and he was in good spirits. It was maybe two weeks after the restaurant had closed, mm-hmm. and we, we were talking about even seeing if Secession would be able to buy any of the liquor or mm-hmm. any of the small wares or anything, and mm-hmm. so I was like, yeah, I'll go and talk to my general manager and see what we can do. I need a list of your liquor because we only have certain I ones and not, that, right. yeah. So that never really worked out. And then he said he had another buyer for it. And that was, that was the last time my husband and I saw him. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that, I mean, as far as on the phone, I could tell you the last time I talked to him. I mean, I haven't heard him talking to mm-hmm. him or, is that something they do? They, they talk on the phone, though, or yeah, they, they would, still have that kind of a they would, talk, they would talk on the phone, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were all pals there, yeah. you know? That's it's like... How often would he come over to your house? Gosh, there for a little bit. Uh, every other day, sometimes, just during the week, and then... Sometimes if he had a little break off at work, he'd just stop by and smoke a few cigarettes and, oh, well, i got to go back to work. And he's brought food a couple of times. And, and you guys just met up there at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Um, we say at one point he's coming over every other day. When, like, what kind of time period was that where it was every other day? When was that? I think it was around my birthday. My birthday was ten ten, so like around oh, those like this year. two. Yes. So just recently. Yes, just recently. Okay. He was coming over there, and him and my husband they would hang out, play video games. I actually had him like help my son figure out how to do the Xbox because I didn't know how, and so he loves playing video games. And Sam's gone over to his house to play video games. That's a little while ago, and I don't. I think he might have done that once or twice. I'm not sure. And, um, yeah, we would just hang out, you know, just hang when, out. When did that stop, him coming over so much? As soon as the suicide, all of that happened, and he, he was going suicidal, he, he shut in. He shut everybody out. He shut himself in. And you know, I couldn't even, you know, get him to answer the door, a phone call or anything. And then, you know, I heard he left his house and went to somebody's mom's house because he was really depressed. And I don't know why. I mean, maybe he wanted that motherly figure in just a safe area, but... We didn't really talk to him after that. And then, you know, I stopped over there, and 
the DUI happened, and then that's whenever I was really worried about him because I saw that picture, and it looked like he had been in an accident, and the car's totaled, and that makes you worry. What What did he tell you about his, his drug dealer? I mean, you said he, he's using excessively. What do you know about who he was getting it from? The only he was thing, he, he was a black guy. You know what? He looks like Kanye West. That's what he looks like. I've been trying to think in my head who and what he looked like because he showed me a picture of him in his phone. Mm -hmm. If y'all can get it. He sh I know that picture was in his phone because he showed it to me one time. And he said, oh, this guy wanted me to delete all of his pictures out of my phone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? You know, mm -hmm. and then that doesn't make any sense. He's supposed to be your friend. Right. Well, turns out it wasn't his friend. It was his dealer. Mm -hmm. So that's whenever I kind of found out what was going on with that and who he was. Mm -hmm. And I think his name's like Isaiah or something. But mm -hmm. they call him Talk. Mm -hmm. Who's they meaning like? Like John and mm -hmm. Josh and Corbett. I think Corbett's who he's. Who's Josh? Josh, um, I don't even know his last name. He goes by nicknames too. I just know his first name. Mm -hmm. Is it Corbett is his? Corbett is, Corbett and John were really close. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was, um, when he was, you know, not feeling good, mm -hmm. he went to Corbett's house. Gotcha. Went to Corbett's house. And, and, you know, Corbett used to come to our house. John, we'd all, you know, mm -hmm. get along just fine. And then it's just confusing to where all of these drugs were so easily accessible to John. Mm -hmm. That's what got me. And, like, and where did he get money and mm -hmm. did he owe them money or I don't know I I, I don't really want to you know get I don't try and get into that scene because I don't want to yeah and, and that's kind of the commonality of, of the people that you just talked about okay you've got Josh Corbett John who all you know I mean we're police officers we kind of know what goes on mm -hmm. and then you've got your husband Y'all don't fit in the mix unless there's something going on on your end as well. I mean, a, a, re, a recovering addict or a recovering um, alcoholic does not put themselves in a in social situation. situation. And, and that's, I mean, that's what I'm waiting on you to tell me is, okay, yeah, my husband, and I don't care if he sells or deals or whatever with these guys. We're trying to find out who it is that John is indebted to. And this little network of folks, I mean, somebody's got to hold the answer. Yeah. Okay? You, you guys it, aren't completely innocent in the whole situation. And, and I don't care about that. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to find out who killed John. Yeah. Okay? So let's kind of... Well, I know, yeah. Re recovering, you don't want to do that. And I think that's why he wanted to be around John was to put him on the right track. And that was my whole thing, too, was to put him on the right track. You're smarter than that. You don't need to be on these drugs. Whenever I was going through cancer, I fell right into the opiate addiction mm -hmm. and pulled myself out of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there is, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, who he is indebted to, I really wouldn't know that information, you know. I mean, do you know if, if he and, and Josh and Corbett, are they all buying from the same person? I mean, your husband, is he using it all that you know of? No. That you know of? No. Because he goes, he has to go to the doctor and get drug tested. Mm -hmm. Every month. For his work? For his work and to go for, he always gets his leg checked up on. 
they, they drug test him just to check on his leg? Mm -hmm. he he was to make sure before. that he's not using and that he's not on anything. What? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I I've, don't never know. Had, I've never had you know, that kind of surgery or anything, but as far, I've never heard of a, of a doctor you know, refusing this, to treat you if you're on drugs. This doctor, yeah. Marijuana, anything, yeah. He, he does that. He drug tests them. So I know that he's good. I know that he's a sane mind, and he's smarter than me. I ask him for more advice, and it's just, I don't know who would want to do this to John, even if it was over money or whatever. That just, that seemed, that seemed very minuscule to me. Honestly. He said he also gets tested for work, but he said he's subcontracting, so he doesn't really have a boss or anything that he's working for. No. I mean, he can so, get that for work, but through the, dis the disability and the lawyers and everything, they need proof of that as well in order for him to get disability. So he's trying to... Proof of the injury. Yes. He, he, we are working on that. We haven't... We haven't nailed down a lawyer yet, so that's why he's doing what he can until we can get him on disability. Because, I mean, that he was the sole breadwinner, and I hadn't had a job yet and or since cancer hit, so that was a few years. And, you know, once I got the job and he could kind of step back and do what he could with subcontracting before we could really focus on getting him disability because it's just wearing him down the whole trying to walk and being in pain and going to physical therapy. Does he make pretty good money subcontracting? Enough to pay $900 rent, but nothing. Because it sounds to me like most of it's falling on you as far as the, the money making goes. Cause so I know subcontracting, in the way that you're talking about it, can't be very really lucrative. No, no. Then that's why it's so important that I try and hold on to this job. This is the first job that I actually make good money to get us out of the hole we're in. And we have my mom, my dad there also helping, but they're going to be moving out in like less than a month. They already have a place. So it's like we're all trying to get on top of, our, you know, back on our feet because everyone kind of hit their own little patch and so we came together as a family and just now we're getting out of the hole. Right. When the officers got there today, did, did you throw something in the back of that boat? Oh, no. 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 Did you go over to the boat? I did, yeah. I did go over the boat because I was wondering if someone was in the boat calling 911. They were saying that 911 kept going off. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that, can I look around there? I was like, sure. And then I just thought, hmm, is someone in the boat? Right. So I just stepped up and looked over. Gotcha. Got now, down. Is that y'all's boat? Yeah. And what about the property, like, next to that little shed thing that's on y'all's property? Too? Yes. Do y'all own any weapons? No. No. No, no handguns, BB guns, shotguns. No. That's a rough area out there. Like, most people that live out there have something. What about your dad? No, he can't. Um, we can't have weapons because he is a convicted felon. Your dad? Mm -hmm. What was... Oh, it was just for something way... A long time ago. Yeah, cocaine or something. I'm not quite sure. But that was like 11 years ago. And so we don't, we don't operate with guns. What about your husband? Has he ever been arrested for anything before? He has. He has. I should get that one too. Yeah. Uh, some ecstasy mm -hmm. pills in Augusta, mm -hmm. and then he did ten years of probation for that service. Yeah, all that, and that's been all done and taken care of. Everything's good with that. That's been over for a while. But we know we can't have weapons in the house. And, you know, yeah, it's quiet back there, but there's a guy 
problem our security system because he rides up and down on the golf cart 24-7, and he really looks out right. for weirdness and stuff mm-hmm. going on. Does he live down there? Is he like the mayor of Pointers? <laughs> he is. He totally is. He's like retired from the Marines, and so on his, you know, golden days, that's what he does. And it makes me feel safer. I know, and I wave to him every day, and so. Have um, your husband and uh, and John have they ever uh, had any sort of? Uh, I mean, you said at one point he got jealous. I'm trying to figure out how you knew he was jealous. Like what what was going on there? Did they get into a fight at one point? Oh no, no. no. Like and, uh, John didn't even know what was. Oh, John jealous. didn't even know. He was John didn't even know that he was jealous. Whenever, like, let's say, you know, you're John and you're my husband and we're talking and then my husband's going to see us talking or I might be talking too too much more to you and not paying attention to you, that'll be like, oh, you like John, you like John, you know. But that wouldn't happen until we're in the house. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like kidding, but sometimes with our past Mm -hmm. stuff, it, you know, I see at you. Yeah. See where he's coming from Is with John that. Having a I haven't had um, John. I haven't known John to have a girlfriend since I've known him. And I know he always wears that Tiffany bracelet, and that was from his previous girlfriend that broke his heart. I only know stories about it. Do you know what her name is? We keep hearing that, but nobody knows who this girl is. I know. I don't know how long ago it was that they broke up. I don't know if she lives here. All I know is that necklace represents her. I'm going to take this stuff out for a second. So, So, go ahead. There not any. Like I heard, there was someone at the house. Who did you hear that from? Um. Someone said, "Who said that?" Someone was like, "Oh, someone was there." That was from Josh. Oh, okay, Josh. That Josh told you that. Yeah, he told me that. You mean at the house where it happened? Is what you're saying? He said that he was at the house earlier. I think what happened was is he was there. He said he left around 8-ish or something, and then I was there after that, and then someone else was there after that. But I don't know who or what or why even. Um, you say you know Josh's last name, but you, you know some nicknames for him. Mm-hmm. What was their nicknames? Yosh. Yosh? Yosh. Um, what are the... You know, I, I, talked, I talked to Josh briefly because his wife and I talk and our kids play. And so whenever I talk to her, she called me and... I don't know. She was just hysterical. Like, I can't believe anyone would do this to him, you know, to John. And, and we cried about it. And, I mean, I, I'm just, I don't know what to think. I really yeah. don't know what or who would do this. Um, did John ever give you any ideas on his plans for getting out of debt or some money-making plans or anything like that, what what he wanted to do? No. No. Um, One thing, which I don't know is a true statement or not, but when he was over at our house, he had the um, lawsuit papers with the restaurant. You know, he would come to us and everything. We would give him advice and stuff. Because my husband, um, father-in-law, he's a federal court judge, so we try and get, you know, advice. Sometimes, oh, what if this person is in this situation? 
what, you know, would they do? And so um, he was just worried that he wasn't going to be left with anything. But once you sell everything out of the restaurant, I thought that it would be able to pay off their loan, I guess, that they were in Mm -hmm. issues with. But I guess it wasn't enough money. Then I heard that he was exchanging counterfeit bills through some bank, which he knew the general manager. And I'm like, man, how, wait, how are you going to exchange counterfeit bills? The feds are going to be right on top of that. Because there was a kid in my high school years ago that was doing that, and they came and rushed him in school, and he had, you know, federal charges. So I don't know if that was a lie or something to just say, or why. but why would you say something like Where's that? Where was he getting counterfeit bills, sir? Talk. Talk. What bank was he using? that's what I don't know. He would never release the bank. He just said that he was good friends with the bank manager. And whenever, I guess whoever they were, this is what it was, the bank that the restaurant used. He would take in the restaurant deposit with the counterfeit and deposit it in the restaurant account. And then I guess the manager started realizing, hey, I, yeah, counterfeit bills no go. Do you have, you know, can you replace these? I, I, I still don't know what they get on. So, so he was basically washing counterfeit bills through peppers. Through the restaurant. And, um, okay. Who was? Uh, apparently, um, John was receiving counterfeit bills from Talk. Isaiah, and was depositing them in the ba- in whatever bank mm-hmm. he would deposit the pepper sports stuff in, and he knew the general manager for this bank, so the general manager was kind of letting it go through uh, initially. And he said somebody figured it out. So he said somebody figured it out. The, yeah, the manager, the branch manager of the bank. Okay, so the it GM's out. boss figured it out. See that? I don't know. I don't know if it was just in-house or if it was like a regional or somebody else had figured it out I don't I'm not sure on that one but he he was upset about that and he didn't know what to do and then he had his lawsuit papers and I remember looking over them because he didn't know what to do about the sipping cow lady and how she's coming in and trying to take more than what she was deserved and that had him and, you know, all kinds of stress and anxiety and on top of depression. I mean, you have so many things hitting you at once. I can see why he went out of control. But I felt like he was coming back. Like, he was normal whenever I talked to him that night. It wasn't like he wasn't the night out before. Like he was. Right. It wasn't like the time before when I saw him and he is, you know, can't even walk down the stairs and he's about to go drive. Mm -hmm. His eyes are, you know, rolling in the back of his head. This was, this was normal John. Right. What, now, you wear a uniform at work or what do you wear? Yes, I do. Did you change at all? No. Um, I probably just had on like a tank top. I typically wear a button down black shirt, mm-hmm. but I always have on something underneath it. Mm-hmm. I think I just had on a black tank top underneath it, and I put my shirts on the hanger in the back seat. What kind of bottoms do you wear? Black. Shoes? Black. Black. Black, like black loafers. Okay. I think that's what the shoe goes first. And that's what you're wearing when you're at your home. Mm-hmm. Did you see any other cars or any other people down there at all? I mean... You said, I guess you're kind of... Yeah, I was kind of woozy. Um, I mean, I remember us both turning and looking at one car, but it didn't, like, register as anything Mm -hmm. different or out of the ordinary. Yeah, I I, I can't 
Did you have contact with any other people that night at all? I mean, any other friends? You know, you're driving around, drinking your wine. I mean, did you pick anybody up? No. No? No. Did you ever stop anywhere? No. Pull just over? Just to get wine. <laughs> just to get wine. Do you have a wine? Is it a twist top or? I'm a waitress. I had a wine key. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm the, that, and you know what? And it's it's like weird because I don't do that on a on a regular basis. Like right. I I've been good on not drinking. Mm-hmm. The drink at work, I, you know, after I'm clocked out, right. okay. And then I would nothing on the way home. Then I don't know what it was. It was just yeah, like stressful days, stressful nights, a lot on your mind. You know, work has been stressful. I haven't been getting the shifts that I want, and then you know, there's just little things with the members. They're they're paying a hundred grand a year to get, be there, so they already think they're up and they here. don't have to tip you. Up. They don't have to be nice. They, you know, I'm there for them to mm-hmm. cater to them, so that can throw me in for a loop. And, so I just wanted to, you know, try and marinate and not bring that animosity home with me because I bring it home and I start bitching about work whenever I get home. He hates that. I don't want to hear about work. I don't want to hear about I need somebody to vent to. Right. You know, so and John let me do a little bit of that. You know, we we're talking about work, restaurants, and how, how it's a fickle bitch and shit happens and you just gotta you just gotta keep going do you ever stop anywhere else on your way home like other friends houses or other bars i mean you stop there's um, like the blue moon saloon or whatever that i stopped yeah, yeah. i have stopped at a bar um one time on the way home but that is it's at the mad hatter yeah, yeah the mad hatter yeah i stopped How's that place? old and redneck <laughs> <laughs> so I had like two beers and I was gone um I haven't been back but other than that I mean I don't have a lot of friends mm-hmm. in the area um I lost a lot whenever I left work and whenever I got off Facebook I just lost communication with them right. and um my best friends aren't in town they're in Michigan and Augusta and LA so I'll FaceTime, Snapchat, that sort of thing. But I don't really have, like, girls' nights or stuff like that. I guess I did a little too much partying back in the day and mm-hmm. kind of out of the How old are you? 34. Yeah. You're getting there. Yeah. You just, psh, yeah. Not, even Not worth, worth it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Not even worth it. Not worth it. You have responsibilities. And- mm-hmm. And now today, you know, my mom and I, we're, like, looking for clothes that I can make into zombie costumes for <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> but, and then you guys showed up, and I was just like, 911 calls. This is, this is weird. Because, I, you know, and I knew I was going to be talked to because I was one of the last people there. You know, I saw him, and I... I I just, I can't even believe anyone would have the call to do that. Did, did you ever go to the clubhouse at all? Pull over on the side of the road, stop to pee, change clothes, anything like that? No. I think I peed at Parker's. They have clean bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it is, but no. I mean, I remember. I mean, I might have drove through that little pool thing, but I don't know why I would have gone that way instead of that way. How much did you have to drink at work? I had a two screwdrivers. Two Pretty heavy pours. So more like four screwdrivers or something. Probably. So you have four drinks. Nothing intimate happened. Nothing uh, intimate happened. We hugged, I think, twice. 
That facial was throwing me off. It wasn't very sexy at the time. That is weird. <laughs> that facial thing. And he had that on, on the whole time? He didn't. The whole time well, we were talking. I, mean, I don't know anything about facials. I don't know if that's a long time to have one on or not. But. It depends. It was, yeah, it was dried. It was ready to come was it off. Like a clay mask or like a peel off? It was a peel. It was a peel. And he was in this I big terry cloth robe. And I was like, ooh, I like this robe, you know. <laughs> it's all. Did you have to, like, go knock on the door? Or did he just come out when you... I went knocked. I went knocked on the door. I saw him look through the peephole and then, like, get back. He was a little bulldog. You know, get back. And then he came out and we smoked some cigarettes. And he smoked, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He usually smoked Camel Blues, but I smoked can- uh, Marble Light, so... Getting him, you know, cigarette plenty, here you go. Did he tell you a story about any other random girl stopping by? Mm-hmm. No. That same day? Mm-hmm. No. He didn't even tell me that Yosh had been there earlier. Right. So I didn't, you know, that. Who's, who's Yosh? Josh. Oh, Josh. So I didn't even know he was there. Uh-huh. Until I heard it from his wife. From whose wife? From Josh's wife. Jo- oh, that he married. was there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know if they're married or just mm-hmm. together forever. But whenever she called me and she was like, you know, he was there. I was there. Mm-hmm. I know they're going to come talk to me. Mm-hmm. I've, just, I've watched a lot of First 48. I know whoever's the last person that's been seen mm-hmm. is always going to be talked to. Right. We ha- we saw him last. Right. And we. The, oh, Josh. Oh, and gotcha. I am thinking, gotcha. you know, he was there. But I don't know who else was there or throughout the day or what he did or who he talked to. Let me ask you something. <clears throat> Would it surprise you if I told you that there is there's a rumor out on the street that um, somebody tried to set your husband up to be robbed? Would I believe that? Mm-hmm. I don't believe that. Did that happen? I think what happened could have been a setup. What happened? The door got kicked in. When was that? When was that? I was at work. It was Sunday. Gosh, it's been maybe over a month. Yeah, it's been about over a month. Mm -hmm. Husband's at home, laying on the bed, and then the door kicks in, Mm -hmm. and they're like, freeze, motherfucker, and two shots went, and then... My husband dove off of the bed and went into my closet, like, turned the lights off, closed the door. He didn't have anything to protect himself, so he closed himself off. And I was there, like, right after they were. The door was wide open. Nothing was touched, Mm -hmm. which I thought was very strange. So then I go looking around. I found one of their shell casings. Mm -hmm. And... How much does it? So they were shooting at y'all? They shot like twice, but I don't even know. It was like there's something in the ceiling. I don't know if it was just a scare tactic or what, because it, no problem ever since. Why didn't y'all call the police? Well, I said to him, yeah, call the police. He said a shell casing, right? And he... He thinks that ever since that he's been in trouble in the past, Mm -hmm. that he's automatically judged. And it's happened. And so I didn't want to call behind his back and just file a report for something again. He's been shot at. The first situation was never resolved and nothing ever came about of it. uh, Why do you think somebody would come to your house and do that (laughs) from what i heard on the streets is that someone said we had all kinds of money on hand Mm -hmm. and you can look in our bank statements and our we're like three behind three months behind on rent 
Right. We don't have, you know, that's from like, we don't have anything. You know, we don't have anything. I don't know why these people would want to do something like that. Who do you think did that? I have no idea. And your husband doesn't have any other No. We have gone and talked and Do you no think he would tell you? Who, my husband? Good question. And, and that's what I'm getting at. Like, as far as, like, trust goes with you guys, aside from the infidelity, I guess, that he doesn't trust you for or, you know, he's paranoid about, Would he tell you if he was back in the game? And, and the reason I ask that is because, again, look at the people that he's got. Around him. Around him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not, you've been out of work. You know, I don't know how much money he's bringing in. He's not getting disability. And randomly these people show up and shoot up your house. And he doesn't want to call the cops. You know, if he's clean... Did they go in the house looking around for anything? I mean, that's, there's, there's, I know, it stinks. It does. It stinks. It does. And, you know, I went, whenever I got there initially, the dog, the door's open, the dogs are out. Mm-hmm. I walk around the house. There's plenty of things for them to grab a phone, a DD, a, you know, if it was a robbery, pills, pot, coke, cash. None of that was there. Would he have had a stash for them to take? I know when he's on coke and and pills and all of that, and he knows that I would be gone mm-hmm. the minute I saw it, mm-hmm. and so would our son. And I think that's what gets him the most is he wants to keep us a family, and, that, and I do too. But I don't want my son in any kind of situation like that. And when that happened, did he send you guys away? We sent my mom and Ricky and our son to go get a hotel. Is Ricky just my dad? Okay. Just to make sure in case they wanted to come back that night, or was it? It was supposed to, you know, was it the right house? Like I don't know. They didn't know his name, and then we have no idea. Whenever I asked him, he said the the guy, there's like a hall in the bedroom. He said the guy, he knew he was black. He looked around, so he saw a brief facial and then pointed a gun around and was like, boom, boom. And then my husband gets off the bed, turns off the lights, and then goes and like barricades himself in my closet because it's all like blocked off. He never fired back at him. No. So they made it all the way inside the house, all the way back to the bedroom? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's like when you come in the front door, the there's door, a little like hallway. In the where you went in, like in the front Right. Court. That, yeah, that's our that's our front door right there. Then there's a hallway, and then the corner to our bedroom is okay. right there. So it wasn't four feet inside the house. Okay. And then that happened, and I don't know if maybe they had, a stakeout car or someone watching to see who was coming down the road because he said I was there with, like, in a minute after they were there. After they were there. Where were you at the time? Coming home from work. So it was dark. It was yeah, it was dark. It was, like, 10.30-ish. Does John know about that? I don't know. Incident? You don't? I don't know. You don't know? I've never talked to him about it. About Corbett, Josh, did they know? Corbett, I don't know. Josh, Josh knows. We told him about it, and um, but I, I don't really talk to Corbett much. He he talks to the boys more. What's your read on Josh? He's a guy with like the. That's how somebody else described him. He can be a little out of control. Um, with his drinking, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I don't know what his usage is or whatever or whatnot, but I think he's a good guy. I mean, I don't think that he would do anything, you know, go as far as hurting. Right, mm-hmm. right. You know, I mean, we were all looking out for him. Mm-hmm. But 
why we're like, we're all the closest people to him, but it seems like there's a side that John didn't want us to know about. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it started coming to the surface, and the suicide, and then we're really seeing his usage, it, you know, started calming down as far as I knew, mm -hmm. but I wasn't around him all the time. Did you ever see the guy that he was buying from, the guy you said he looks like Kanye, Kanye West? West? Have you ever laid eyes on him, or did you just see, like, a picture? He said his name's Isaiah, you think. Mm -hmm. And why do you say Isaiah? That's what John, that's what John, John told me. Look, real quick, going back to the, when he busts in your house, so your husband's in the bedroom. The guy leaves, looks around the corner and sees your husband, shoots around the corner twice, a couple times, or whatever. Your husband jumps up, runs to a closet, and they just leave? I think they were out of ammunition. Two rounds and they're out of ammunition? I, I don't know if it was two or, I don't I don't know how many it was. I wasn't there, I mean, looking at, with, you know, the tra de trajectory, it's hard to say how many. They didn't ransack your house. They shot. didn't steal anything. No. He, my husband says when he, because the closet, my closet butts up to that hallway. He said he heard them picking up shell casings, and he thought there was something like a towel wiping their, because it's tile, like wiping their footprints. Then whenever I came in, it looked like someone had really walked around and made a bunch of scuff marks and everything. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if that was just from him and my son throughout earlier the day or, you know, been not cleaning Where up was your son and your mom and dad? Where were they when this happened? They were actually, like, they had gone to the grocery store and then they went and stayed in a hotel because they were going to go look at a house. Mm -hmm. So they were like out at a hotel. That night? That night. They were out, they had a hotel for three nights actually. Already like but paid for. already had a hotel before this incident happened. Yeah. Why? It had been set up. I mean that, excuse me, that to spend 60, 80, 100 dollars a night for three nights on a hotel when you're trying to conserve money before this incident ever happened. Did, did they go out there because you guys anticipated that something was going to happen? No. Whose no. idea was it for them to get a room? My mom. Your mom. Yeah, because she wanted to be closer to where they were going to look at this place, and it was closer for her to take Chase to school. And so I could focus on work. Where was this place you're looking at? It's in Buford. But it's not, okay, it's in the middle of, I guess it's in Okatee. So it was halfway to his work and the house and halfway to the school. So what hotel did they stay at? It was in, like, middle of the road. Um, By the ale house. Which would be farther away from the location you just told us about. No way. From what location? Well, I guess it would be a little it would be closer. Okay, it's not that yeah. far from two seventy eight. Yeah. It would be closer, okay. It's kinda of in the but, middle of the road from one seventy. But so they, they already planned and why do they need three days to look at this place they're not there had been some issues with us going on, fighting in the house. Okay. My mom and my husband were, they're like oil and water when you get them together. And so it was also a little kind of separation to and why did they parties take your son? calm down. Because it was easier for her to, she usually handles him a lot to take him to school and pick him up whenever I've got a crazy work schedule. And how and long whenever, was, there, was the plan for them to stay out there? How long was that? Yeah. Not like, how long? How long? When, when they first left, how long were they planning to stay at the hotel? Yeah, like two nights, three nights. So why a moment ago when we asked if you all left town after that incident occurred, did you say, well, we sent my mom and dad to a hotel for the night just in case they came back. And now you're telling us that actually, no, they went to the hotel ahead of time. They were already there. Yeah, they were already at the hotel. 
Well, I asked, well, why did you tell me a minute ago, tell us a minute ago, that you actually sent them to the hotel? Uh, oh. In response to what happened. Right, because if no one was there whenever it happened, so we wouldn't have sent it. They were already at the hotel. Right, that's what I'm asking. It's a moment ago you said that, that you all sent them to the hotel uh, so they could stay there just in case it didn't. Yeah, I guess we added on another day. Maybe that's when that, that third day was added on, because I do mm -hmm. remember Ricky having it in, like, through Priceline for those days. And then, yeah, it could have been just to go ahead and just till we know it's clear. Because that caused a lot of friction within the household and fights and what's going on and that's why we're all trying to save money and get out of there. Because I, I don't feel safe there. I mean, I don't want that. It it just it troubles me to know that somebody comes into your house, kicks the door open, discharges a firearm, where a family is housed, regardless of whether or not they were there or not, and you guys don't call the cops. Like, that just, it makes no sense to me. Unless there's a reason why. Well, I hey, mean... Before you end, what's your phone number real quick? I guess I'm just confused. I, I'm hard with the timeline and I, the I thinking so far back, and there's so much that's happened. That there, there has been a lot that's happened, and you know, I know obviously you care about John as your friend. Okay, um, and, and that is our focus is him. And, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it and, and tell you that, you know, I believe everything you're telling me because I don't. I mean, it's, there, there's too much going on around you guys for it to be as innocent as it is. All right, and, and obviously, I think by the look on your face, you probably know that, that I'm they're just upset, like sure. I mean, it, it, whether whether you're concealing a relationship, whether your husband is back in the game, whether he was on a bender, why the cops were. I mean, all of these questions, they're unanswered, and the responses that you're giving us don't make any sense. You know, it. I wouldn't be pressing you for those answers if I thought you were being honest. You know, okay. it's like we're we're talking in circles with each other. Um, in I don't care about that stuff, you know, and, and what you tell me isn't, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, hey, you know, a husband, she did this, or it just, I, I get the need to, to air your hair. I'm a woman, I, I, I'm a single mom, and there are days that I love my child more than anything, and there are days I'm like, I wish she would stay with her dad so I could, I, I could be good. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I get it. I get that need for it. Um, and, and that I don't doubt. I don't doubt that, that that's what you were doing. Um, the thing that, that I'm really having a hard time with is the incident at your house, your husband's involvement with these other guys. I mean, you guys may have been down here a short time. Some of these folks have been here for a long time. So we kind of know, like, just, I don't know. And, and you're either going to somewhere deep down inside choose to, to tell me the truth or you're not. No, I have been telling you the truth. I have been telling you the truth. And as far as people that have been here longer, I mean, I don't know. That would be like hearsay or the, just this the word on the street. Well, this... Let me let me put it to you this way. If 
if two people or three people or four people show up at your house to rob you or to do whatever they were going to do, okay, your husband was lucky enough to survive, Mm -hmm. okay? How do we know these people didn't go to John's house to do the same thing? You see what I'm saying? That's why I'm I'm, I'm looking for that information. You know, whatever is there, we need to know so that we can look at it and say, okay, are there similarities in this versus this? You know, you're good friends with John, your husband, Josh, all of these guys. I mean, technically, it could be susceptible to the same thing. Yeah. You're right. I didn't think about those same guys going back over there and doing that. I mean, he owed people money. They could have very well been the same people. But it see it was like word on the street. No one knew who it was and no one wanted to come up and say they knew anything. Right. And then the only thing we got was ghosty voice. Mm-hmm. It's the ghosty voice. And who told you that? Word on the street. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, whether I mean John mentioned it, Corbett mentioned it. Josh mentioned it. It's just like, who else would be so cold? But why would blooded? they? Pick, why would they pick y'all? I mean, it's not like. From what I hear on that one, is that someone went and told them that we were sitting on all kinds of money and this and that, and that's you know why I was so confused. I'm like, we don't have any money. Why would you just go off of someone? what they're saying and not have any proof. Do you think that John could have been the one that set you guys up? I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think that he would do that. He owes people money. They want to collect. Who has the money? He might think we have the money. I mean, does that make sense to you? That, yeah. That's, I'm wrapping my head around that. That does make sense. I just didn't think he was in that deep. I really didn't think that. I mean, but I guess people will do anything over 20 bucks. But I really, I didn't think that any of this would what what did anyone get out of it right you're not getting their money whoever do you think your husband would talk to us yeah I think he would talk to you sure he does how how do we approach him without putting you out there as far as being at John's house And, and the only reason I ask that is because I don't want to cause any more problems with you guys. When does the last time he think you talked to John was? The last time him and I saw him together. Which was? Uh, before the wreck. Yeah. What time did you get home from work? Usually around like evening five, five thirty six. It's like quarter after four. I mean, I know that he wouldn't want to not give the information any right. anything up if he knew anything. Because, I mean, we were both just looking mm-hmm. and reading articles about it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they don't know Did anything. Did you tell him that you were there? Did he know that you were there? He still doesn't know that you were there. I mean, but in this kind of situation, I think it trumps an argument 
you know, him. It's not like I'm going to be going over there again. Right. Unfortunately. You good? You need to go to the bathroom or anything? I'm just, I, I can't wait for that. I really can't. Because I'm going to do that in such a, in just a manner it was done. Do you know Joe at all? Joe. Rubio? Mm. The guy that works at our bar? His name sounds similar, but I am thinking of someone else. That was Coco Rubio. That was in Augusta. How, who's from Augusta? Are you guys from there originally? Mm hmm. We all are. Oh, my dad, husband, all of us. Step out real quick. I know, it was a nice job, isn't it? What's going on right now? Uh, just heavy, heavy stuff. Emotionally, it's, it's, I, 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 I've never been to where I just saw him, and that's the last hug I know I'm ever going to give him. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not good with, with death, and especially, like, murder. I've never known anything like this before. Okay. How did, how did you know that? Because you said a couple of times already that you were the last person to see him alive. What what made you think that, that, you know, like, why, how did you know that? Well, I knew I was one of the last people at his house. Mm. I didn't know if there was anyone else that had come after me mm. or who was there with them. Okay. But, you know, I knew that I was there that night. Right. What, um, just now when we, when we left, what were you saying to yourself? I'm saying, why did you get him to own this shit? Why did he have to get him to own this shit? What, what shit is that? It seems that all of the you know whoever more than you know. he owes money to, all of the addiction issues, you know, the lawsuit with the sipping cow woman, the counterfeit money. I mean, it's just... What it sounded like to us that you were saying to yourself is, why did you do that to him? Why did I do that no, to him? No, not you. You were saying, why did you do that to him? You're asking, why did you do that to him? No. That you have... I mean, at this point, you said that you were at his house, you know, and then you said you drove back past his house. What time do you think that was when you drove back past his house? Probably like, I don't know, it really. I was there like 30, 11, 30, maybe like 11, 30, 11, 45. And then I was home and passed out within like minutes. I got home, I mean, it's sleep. Well, there's actually, um, in back right there, there's a security camera. You can leave. It records everybody that leaves. So you actually left out of there um, the second time, like when you came back to the second time. Your, your car was there with you in it, plain as day, uh, right before and right at the time that it happened. trying to figure out where the connection is there, okay? And as upset as you are about it, and you're re refusing to believe that your husband is involved in drugs anymore, and that your husband is involved in any of that stuff, and yet you have 
people kicking in the door, shooting enough bullets to where they're picking up shells and still leaving some behind. And that's just a random thing that happened. It really doesn't have anything to do with anything. Uh, and you think that it sounds like somebody set your husband up for that, that you know, set y'all's house up to get hit. But, but you don't think any of this has to do with, with drugs or any of that. And then there's no connection between, you know, you, it sounds like y'all had a pretty tight-knit group there. So what what is, what what are you not telling us here? Because we know that there is a good bit more. Because there's a lot that, you know, that we know that we haven't told you yet, but there's obviously a lot that you know that you haven't told us. I, I mean, I'm like rattling my brain at what it could be. I don't, I'm not quite sure what I know that I, I don't know exactly what I know to tell. I mean, were you by yourself the other night when you were in Pie Crest? Yes. The first time. What about the second time? Yes. Nobody in the car. I never went anywhere else. It was just me. I didn't stop, pick anybody up, nothing. <laughs> When you're answering all these questions, keep in mind that Pinecrest does have a lot of security cameras more than people realize. And his house is at the pool where the pool's got all kinds of security cameras on it as well. Oh, I know. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. So you I know that. Anybody. You didn't meet anybody. You didn't talk to anybody. You didn't call anybody at all during that time you were running around drinking wine in the car. Not that, no. I definitely didn't have anyone in my car. I had my work clothes in there, my purse. But did you get Shoes. up with anybody? Did you call anybody? I don't, I mean, call anybody. No. Call anybody. If I did, I can't, I really can't remember after all the alcohol. Your husband was involved? I think he was involved. You don't think or I know he wasn't. He was at the house all night. How do you know that? My mom was there. The child was there. They were, you know, they were all there. Whenever I got home, everyone was just do you realize that your car was about 40 yards from his house when he was shot? No. I did not know that. It was my car. No, it's your car. It's your car. We can see you in it. Who can vouch that your husband was at the house? Everybody was asleep when you got home. I mean, my mom was there watching him go to bed. I can't remember if Ricky was off that night, my dad, or what. But they he were all usually, asleep. Well, he goes in spurts. He has a bad back. He could have been asleep, wake, sleep, wake. I feel like this is turning into, do I need to get a lawyer? Well, I mean, you're not in trouble. You know, I feel like my words are being twisted around, though. It's not that your words are being twisted around, but, you know, it's, again, going back to that thing with the hotel. I mean, your initial story is that they went to the hotel because of the home invasion. Your other story then becomes, well, no, they were already at the hotel. Yeah, I can't remember everything verbatim with what's been happening. I mean, I've got other stuff going on just besides remembering a timeline. I don't know. I've just I've got other things going on that I didn't think that was. I, I don't know. I, I didn't think that there was going to be anything to come of that. I thought it was like over. I didn't know if it was a random act. I 
didn't know if someone was involved with it. No one seemed to know anything about it on the streets and whatever. Nobody had any idea who set it up. Not that they want to claim. Because from we've heard your husband knows who set it up. No, oh, he does not know who set it up. Neither one of us know who set it up. So your husband has no idea who, did it, who set that up for his house to get kicked in. And these guys threw in and shoot around and he hides in the closet and they just leave. We we actually, when that happened, we went and stayed at a friend's house just to collect our thoughts and talk about who and why. And never a definitive answer on who or why. Let me ask you a question. Did your husband shoot back the gunshot? No. No. We don't have guns. Why do you think they would just leave? I think they got scared because I was coming down the road. And who's to say if that wasn't a policeman who heard gunfire? Did you pass them on your way in? No, I didn't pass. And what I did is, you know, I'd turn on my brights. It's so dark going down the road. They could have crossed over to the neighbor lady's driveway and gone out a completely separate way. They could have crossed over the other road and went out a completely separate way. There's a lot of land right there. Anyone could have been parked there, sitting there, hiding there. I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I don't know. How is it that you got the information from the street, as you said, but that someone say a lot by saying there was a lot of money in the house, but nobody had any guesses as to who set it up? I don't know who would tell someone that we had money in the house. To be honest, I mean, we're not walking around flaunting money. I've been working like crazy. It's bizarre to me that anyone would think that we would have money. It's not flowing from a phone bill or rent right now. I mean, we were almost on the verge of eviction. And that's been taking a lot of stress on me as well. That happened on a Sunday about a month ago, you said? You know, it was on a Sunday. How soon after that was, was John's whole suicidal episode? Like a month. A month after that? Yeah. You said that happened a month ago. So. Yeah. I mean. But John wasn't suicidal just recently. So you're saying that's like, not what I heard. I heard that he had police officers. It was like several weeks ago, right? Right. So a month ago, the end of September, because we're the end of October now, so the end of September is when your car was kicked in, right? I can't, I mean, I, I can't verify dates. All I know is it's on a Sunday. I would say it's a Sunday, it's roughly a month ago. So we'll just call it the end of September because we're the end of October. Okay. All right. So then, for when, when John was suicidal, they said it was a few weeks ago, so it's going to be shortly after that, after your door gets kicked in. I mean, he was suicidal when the restaurant was going down. I mean, the, two, I'm talking about know, the one where... separate yeah. instances. But this most recent one where the cops didn't show up at the, at the residence and everything because, you know, we were calling saying he's going to kill himself and he was talking about issues and everything. So that happens just a little bit after your door gets kicked in. Okay. So, and, and this all happens right after the restaurant has to shut down. 
so from what we've been told is that your husband found out that John set him up because John was hard up for money. And John thought there was money hidden in the house. But we never thought John was hard up for money. He always had money. Well, I'm not saying y'all thought John was hard up for money, but I'm saying that just John was hard up for money. And your husband was under the impression that John set up the, the hit on y'all's house. Well, I... Because wasn't John over there just a, a little bit prior to uh, to them all coming in? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were all hanging out. And then they leave. And how did you know about that, about them being over there? I was there. I was there right before I went to work. I said bye to John and Sam, and then I went to work. About what time did you leave for? I don't know either that day. I can't remember what time. I always leave an hour beforehand, so it was maybe two or three if I left. Do you remember what day that was? Was it a weekday or a weekend? It was. So, so the, the restaurant shuts down. John still has debt from Jack's, from when he had the Jack's restaurant there, because he has like thirty-six thousand dollars worth of debt that he owes for that restaurant. I that. Right, I, I'm yeah. sure he did. There's no reason why he would. Shipping count shuts down, and now he's hard up. You know, he's got even more money tied up because of that. that and he's an addict. And and he's an addict. So he's, as you said, he's been in. About hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars a day on, uh -huh. on pills. Uh, you know, he gets some of his stuff from this one drug dealer, but you know, maybe he gets other stuff from other drug dealers because you know he's buying from the same people all the time. We're borrowing from the same people all the time. They're not going to keep giving him stuff. He's racking up debt there, and for some reason, John's under the impression that y'all probably have money stashed away. For some house. reason. Because your husband's clean and he's not selling. But in fact, we know that your husband's one of the people that John would buy from when he would need, especially if he needed a little bit of weed or something like that, and maybe a few pills. So John believes that y'all have money in the house. He's over at the house that night. We know that he was acting, by your husband's orders, acting suspicious that night. He leaves, and shortly after he leaves, the door gets kicked in. We're talking like maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Really? After he leaves, the door gets kicked in. I knew it was that. Oh. And oh. then these guys come in, start shooting, but for some reason they just start shooting. They don't steal anything. They don't wreck the place. What in fact happened was your husband shot back and scared them off. They take off, and... Besides the fact that your husband can ask around and probably figure it out, he knows that John was there just moments before all this happens. Okay? So John obviously set him up. He confronts John about it, and John, for whatever reason, is completely honest. Like, yeah, man, my bad, basically, because we have John's phone records and John's texts. He's like, my bad. You know, I apologize. You know, I... I, I you should probably go after those guys, not after me, because they're the ones that actually did it. You know, I'm just in a bad spot. All right. And then we've got other texts from John where he's talking about what he did with other people. That everything went bad, and now he has no money because he, the thing that he was trying to do didn't work out. What? what which mean? was at the very beginning of October, which is right after this happened at your house. Get the money from us, is what you're saying, that that yeah. didn't work out? Because he was going to get a cut of it. So we know all that, okay? And we know that your husband knew. And from the sounds of it, you and your husband talk a lot. Y'all share I, a lot. I, I didn't know that. We I didn't know, know that. your that. husband has guns, too. I didn't know that he had text messages verifying any of that. I I didn't know that. I, uh, no, or the guns, or this little buying pills here and there. I mean, I didn't know about any of that. I don't, you know, I don't know if he's 
Oh my god. <sighs> Did he end up doing that? Did he own a long rifle? No. Never seen him with a camouflage weapon? No. No. Your dad's seen him with weapons. Yeah, he has a um, older rifle, but that's at his dad's house in Augusta. Not down here. Not, not down here. No. Has your dad been to John's dad's house? No. So how would he have seen him with that rifle? You wouldn't have. Your dad has seen John with weapons. My dad has seen John with weapons. Oh, I'm sorry, I've seen your husband with weapons. I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Your dad has seen your husband, Sam. With, right? weapons. with weapons. Yes. At our house. Well, he's seen him with weapons. Okay. So, I assume it's at, I don't know, do you, does your dad and Sam hang out a lot other than at your house? Not that I no, know probably, of. Probably than at your house, yeah. Yeah. Would you ever let anybody else use your car? I have. Before. Like who? Like my husband. My mom. Ricky. I mean. But you're the primary driver. I am the primary driver. When do you think the last time somebody else used your car was? Oh, it's been a while. And I mean, I know my husband and Josh were hanging out, but this was maybe last week sometime. And Josh was actually drunk, and so he went and picked him up at the bar or something and, and took him home. But that was, I mean, he went straight there and came home, I was watching the clock on that one. As you can tell whenever he makes little stops or wants to do something else, I mean, you go there, come straight back, okay. Mm -hmm. When you say make stops or do something else, what do you mean by that? Like, maybe stop to get something to eat or stop in a friend's house or, you know, just... Uh, it's just kind of an ongoing thing with him. It'll be like, oh, well, I just I just ran into so and so, got their card, gave him my card, or got their new number, gave him my new number. He goes through meeting people all the time mm -hmm. with that kind of job. You want to smoke a cigarette? Not the place where she can smoke. I mean, um, she can't obviously yeah, smoke in here, yeah. but maybe, I don't know, the Sally Port or can, somewhere? Yeah, uh, well, right, yeah. I suppose the two of us can walk right outside. Well, yeah. I'll be right, right back. Give so. me So, what's next? I mean, do I. Am I writing a statement? Am I. Yeah, we'll get you to write a statement soon. Um, I've never had to deal, I don't know. My main thing right now is when when we asked if, if you thought your husband could have done this, the normal response to something like that is, oh, no, absolutely not, definitely not. Your response is, I don't think so. And that is not a very... It's not something that comes from somebody who's convinced of a person's innocence. And we know that your husband and John, not on a constant basis, but have had their problems. We know that your husband, on at least one occasion, has hurt John for one reason or the other. Like hurt Like physically. And beat him up, roughed him up a little bit. Not nothing serious to put him in the hospital, but he's roughed him up. Now, that to me is the, the action more of, some, of, a, of a dealer towards the person that's buying from them than two guys that are 
primarily friends. Now, we know that they were friends as well. We know that John would come over and play Xbox or whatever, like you said. But we also know that it wasn't a completely friendly relationship, that your husband had problems with him, that your husband had, had gotten angry with him before, and had roughed him up a little bit. And we also know that the, you're aware of most of that, okay? So, I mean, if, if you can elaborate a little bit on that, you should tell us it never happened. We appreciate that. Telling you what never happened. That, that well, because you're saying that John's never, or John's never been physically assaulted by your husband at all, but we know that that did happen. I know that he was, if that were any kind of thing, that was made up. He hasn't been assaulted. Your husband never roughed him up at all? Not that I know of, and I mean... Why are people, why are close friends, of, like people that are friends with both of them, telling us all these different things? I know he didn't rough him up. I, I didn't see him rough it up, rough him up. I wasn't there, but... I have heard of him maybe verbally assault him, but not to where he would put his hands on him or hurt him, literally. Well, what was that about? I, I think that happened at Josh's house over... Who was there? Josh... some of Talk's black friends. And so what did, what did you hear about that? Like, what was the context of that situation? There? I just heard that they got into a little argument, and Sam was like, what's up, John? You know, I haven't heard from you in a while. And then John kind of gave him some attitude, and then he gave him some attitude back. My that was all that. I heard. Hey, how you doing? Miss Collette, is it? Yes. How you doing? I'm Lieutenant Beth with the Buffalo Police Department. I nice work with uh, Detective Odom. Um, you feel like taking a break and going out for a smoke or something? I know you've been in here for a while. Yeah. You want to go out for a smoke? There, yeah, come on. I'll come join you. something like this happens in, in our town, it doesn't happen very often. So we always stick most of our investigators on, on a case and what have you, you know. Um, I'm in charge of the investigation division. The people you've met work for us or help us out with, Angela helps us out. Um, so it's kind of like an all hands on deck where everybody's kind of helping out. So okay. that's probably why you see people coming and going and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, before we, before that, I just have to ask you a few things and kind of some things I, I, um, you know, some further questions I have from the interview I, I watched that you were doing earlier. Uh, for the, what's, your, what's your phone number call it? Do you have a phone number, cell phone, or anything like that? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I gave it. I gave him the phone number. It's five four zero. All right. Um. Take me back to Tuesday night, um, or Tuesday during the day. Um, do you kind of take me through your day on Tuesday? Take me through Tuesday through your day, starting from on a when do you first make contact with John? Do you make contact with him during the day at all, or anything, or no? Do you call him or anything? Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay. My my phone has actually been turned off because I paid the bill. Oh, so you don't have any phone? 
So, so whenever I need to get, like, I really need to contact with my job and with the school. So my mom, she they had her on file, and she sure. was able to pick them up and everything. Same with my dad. And so wow. they know that they can get a hold of me through him. Okay. If I need to come in early or or whatever or whatnot. Okay. So this number you gave me shut up. Yeah. So if I had to contact you again, what would be a good number to contact you at? Oh, probably my mom's okay. number. What's that one? Seven of. Okay. And then my my dad, mm-hmm. Ricky, his is. Nine one. And does, I'm sorry, what, what's your husband's name? Is it Sam? Sam. Mm-hmm. Does Sam have a cell phone? It's on the same contract as mine. That was shut off, of course, right? Yeah. So how do you guys get around? Well, well it just happened within I the mean, last couple of days, so we're just waiting. I get oh, paid okay. on Friday, okay. so we can pay that minimum. So okay. We can get what is Sam's cell phone on. in case I, I can't get in touch with you and you guys get your cell phone? Turns yeah, out. it's 840. I appreciate that. And that's Sam? Mm-hmm. Sam Trejo, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um... What time do you go to work on Tuesday? It varies. I think Tuesday, gosh, I have, sometimes I go on at two, three, uh, Okay, or four. I'm sorry. This particular Tuesday that I'm trying to think. this past Tuesday. I think it was, I think it was two. Two o'clock? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then is there like a set amount of hours you work every night or what time did you get off? It goes really based on what the members we have member dinners Mm -hmm. so they'll have a reservation for four or five or whatever but it's a set meal so they don't order off of a menu we just serve them they drink alcohol it's in a fine dining atmosphere so you know linens and everything sure once they are done dishes we have to wash our own dishes Yeah. yeah We have to wash our own dishes, put them all the, all back. So what time was it that you think you got off? Probably about 9.30. 9.30. Okay. And, and you're heading home from successions. How long does it usually take you to get home? About 45 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a pretty good drive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's up in Beaufort, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. To like, it's Passport Royal, like right. Ladies right, Island. That's right. I've only been there once, and that was back in the summer. I got to yeah. Um, okay, so you come back. You, I guess you drive down Buckwalter, is that what you said earlier? Mm-hmm. Okay. What made you go over to John's house? Well, I was already thinking about him, and then I just saw the pine press sign, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a little detour, because else I would go all the way down Buckwalter and turn left on 46 to go home. Those were right down there on the right. So and I hadn't seen him since he got the DUI and everything. And I just went over there, knocked on the door. and he How many came. times have you been over to his house? Like twice. Twice. And how did you know how to get over there? He told me where it was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were talking about. Cause on this was, particular day he told you? No. he A while back. He okay. told me where he lived because we were talking about that neighborhood. Okay. And okay. he knows I'm in the... I'm looking for another place, and so he was okay. like, you know, there's... So at this point, you know where he lives. You don't need directions or anything like no. that? No. Okay. No. Okay. So you get there. Remember what time you got there? I, right. not, I mean, maybe around 10-ish or, wait, if I was 1045. Okay. And, you know, okay. I mean, once the drive time... And you were there for about... Maybe an hour. Did you ever go inside his house? No. Never went inside? No. Never been inside his house. Never ever? Never ever. Oh, okay. All right. Did you guys ever go into the back at all? No. Backyard? No. We stayed. I parked in the driveway, and we stayed leaning up against my car, smoked some cigarettes, talked, yeah. hugged, and... 
was the conversation like with, with you two? Did he, did he seem any different than he normally is or anything like that? He actually seemed a little more headstrong, like he was coming out of his funk and really? maybe coming out of his... Yeah, because he was in a funk. I was actually one of the guys who responded down when um, his parents thought that he was going to commit suicide. And yeah. He really seemed in a funk then. Yeah. So what was, like, kind of take me, what was your conversations like? I mean, what, were you guys talking, was he talking about anybody or anything like that? No, we were just talking about the restaurant and, you know, how he had, we were talking, like, he knows I'm at Secession. He wanted to know if they'd be interested in getting any of the alcohol and, Okay. We talked sure. about, you know, his state of mind. Is he okay? And did, did he say he was okay? He did, but yeah. it's hard to tell if he really was. I mean, he was in a robe and in a mask, so that to me means that he's actually wanting to take care of himself. Yeah. A mask being a facial mask. He was wearing a facial mask? Yeah. Okay. He was wearing a facial mask. Okay. <laughs> He's a pretty boy. Hey, you I gotta guess so. Keep that up. I guess so. So, um, I mean, another, and you know, I could tell them I had a, I had some drinks whenever I got off work. Oh, well, where'd you get the drinks from? At work after I clocked out. Did you take a bottle with you? No. No. Oh, so you drank there. Drink there. Okay. So I thought you said you were drinking wine in the car. I, know I did stop and get some wine. Where did you stop to get wine at? At Parker's. Parker's where? The Buck Walter. Okay. Buck Walter. And that was before you went over to to uh, John's house. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And what you get? You, so you got a bottle of wine over there or something? I didn't know he's full wine over there. Yeah. They do. They do. Is that any good? You know, it's a barefoot. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not much Cheap, wine but right yeah. That's the best wine for me. <laughs> you know. Um. Okay, so you're there for a while. You, you leave, where do you go after that? Well, my husband's been sober for over a year as of September. Oh, and then, I know, and that was a big feat. So, I don't like bringing it around him. He doesn't mind if I drink, but I really don't like bringing it around him. And he didn't know what time I got off work because I couldn't. How long has your husband been sober? Over a year. As of no, this is drugs and alcohol? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He went to meetings. And okay, tell me about this inc- This time when, um, it was a few weeks ago, that you and your family left for four days and he went on a coke binge. I didn't leave to go anywhere. I mean, my family did. Okay. But I... Mean, I I mean, if he had a if he had a lapse, that, that I understand. Yeah, I mean, but he did. but you speak truthful with me. Okay. Yeah, well, mainly the alcohol. So he did what, have a lapse. He did have a, okay. a lapse in okay. the choke, and that and, and that majorly depressed him, and he had been going through that years before. Mm-hmm. He had an issue with it, and I got him off of that. And I said, you know, I'm not going to be around. Did you catch him? Continue. Did you catch him in this? Four day hiatus thing that he was involved with. I did. And what was your reaction I did. to that? I mean, somebody. I mean, you seem like a very caring woman. You know, very. You know, somebody who cares about who they love and everything like that. Um, that that would have hit me hard to see somebody who I care about, who I think is doing well, suddenly mm-hmm. just just have a laugh like mm-hmm. that. I mean, what was your reaction to that? Oh, I got all of it out. It was gone. I just was like. We, you can't have this around you. Mm-hmm. We don't need any kind of triggers for you. Sure, so exactly. I got yeah. it out. And at the same time, I'm having to work right. and a weird schedule. So I, I can't be there all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. And so all of our experiences, and, you know, we've known each other for 13 years now. Well, I know when... I mean, he could just do one line, and I could see it. Mm-hmm. And whenever I saw it, I was like, "You, you can't, you can't lie." To How me. does that make him act? Does it like make him act aggressive? Does it make him act relaxed? I mean, it's kind of a up and down yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, you know, one minute he's happy, one minute he's sad and depressed. Yeah, a bunch of mood swings and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you something, and 
you know, this, uh, leave the room. Has he ever abused you? Has he ever hit you when he's on coke or anything like no. that? No. Nothing like that? No. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so, and I just had to ask that because I know you said you drank in your car and he's been sober for a year, but. We didn't. I didn't want him to know that I was drinking. Okay. Now, does he know you drink? Are you are you trying to portray to him that you're being sober as well? I he knows that I do, but I don't want to bring it around him and mm -hmm. cause a trigger or a fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, you live with your parents. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do your parents know John at all? They've met him. They met him. They've I mean, met are, him are they by like, coming over there? By John coming over there sure, and sure. Are they acquainted? I mean, do they get along with him when he's at the house? Because mm -hmm. from from my understanding earlier, John comes over to the house a pretty good amount of time. I assume. Mm -hmm. right? more yeah. Than, would you say more than five times he's come over to the house? Mm-hmm. Okay. And your parents have been there while he's he's there. Mo yeah, most of the time. Okay. Like my and they've mom never had any issues or anything like that. None whatsoever. And they get along no. fairly well. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you something. How come you didn't tell your parents that John was dead? I I was in shock, and I didn't find out till last night that literally I've only been up for an hour when everybody came. And what do you mean you're only up for an hour when everybody came? I had only been up for an hour, and then all the police show up, so I hadn't even had time to have any conversation. My Ricky, my dad, he was asleep because he works the late shift. He doesn't okay. get off till 2 a.m., so then he sleeps. So he was asleep, and then I get on the phone on WTOC, and then I see it. When then, did you When did you find out that he died? When did you find out that John died? Last night, about. Let's see, I closed again. I got home probably ten ish, and then looked it up. My son's in the bed, my mom's in the bed, and, you know, Sam and I talked about it, and we're just like, what in the hell, what, what, what's going on, what, uh, who would do this? Night. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went to bed, okay. and then got up at, like, 1 o'clock, because I usually get ready at 2, and mm -hmm. then that took me an hour to get ready at 2, and then I leave at 3, an hour to drive, and I was supposed to be able to schedule at 4. Okay. Now, let's go back to after you leave John's house on the night of the murder. Um, you leave John's house. Where do you go? I just went riding around drinking the wine. Riding around drinking the wine. You remember where you went, though? Not, like, insane mind. No. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the alcohol. And I know I shouldn't have been drinking and driving, and I know that. And I'm not going to arrest you for DUI, I promise. And, yeah, you, you're homicide. So it was just kind of staying close to the house. Like, it went through the farm and rode around. Do you know anybody that lives in the farm? I know a couple people. Did you stop by their houses or anything? No. No? No, I didn't, I didn't stop or talk to anybody. I was just kind of okay. wanting to get that little wine buzz. Sure. How long do you think you've been driving around for? See, that's the thing. I don't. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know how long. I, was. I know it was more than 30 minutes. Okay. Probably, at any point, like... At any point in your travels, did you ever pull off to the side of the road anywhere? I do remember maybe stopping. Where did I stop? I stopped. I couldn't find my cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It had fallen under my seat, but I don't know where that was. To go searching for them, just fall right down in there. So you gotta like move the seat back and go all the way okay, under. Okay, so you dropped your cigarettes. Did you like open the door to see if you dropped your cigarettes or anything like that, or I think I to get a better look, to get the light on so that you can see where your cigarettes are? No, I don't think I. No. Okay. My like the big screen that I have in the car mm -hmm. for the radio and everything is very bright. Okay. So uh, you know, once I moved my seat. They were there. Okay. And you don't remember where it was at that you stopped, that you pulled off the side so of the road? So dark. Okay. Do you know, was it on the grass? Was it on the breakdown lane somewhere? Was it? It was just kind of 
like right off the side of a paved road, maybe partial grass. Okay. Was it like you a little... To kind of get out of, you know, the way in case... Sure, you... sure. Was it like flat land? Was it a little hilly? It was flat. Just flat. Pretty sure. Okay, I'm just trying to get an idea as to where you drove. I mean, because I don't... Yeah. Um, okay, where else... Uh... And I know if I hadn't had any of that alcohol, I wouldn't be able to remember it, but that was impairing. And it's, you know, trying to piece it together sure. now, it's like... Sure. Do you think you have a drinking problem? I know I um, I have gone through some major issues with it, yes. Okay. I mean, I think if you're driving around and you're drinking, that's a problem. Yeah. And that's just between you and I, you know. I mean, there's ways to get help. You know, I'm, I'm not here to judge you for that. But if it's to the point where you black out and you don't even know where you're at, yeah. I mean, that can become a problem. Yeah. Um, okay. So after you go drive through the farm, Remember where you go to next? No. I think after that, I started heading towards my house. Towards your house? Yeah. Okay. Do you ever go back into Pinecrest after you go over to the farm? I don't remember. You don't remember, or? I don't. I don't remember. I remember going over the little hump light. remember which which way. Okay. You can, when you left work, did you change clothes at all? Or did you stay in the same clothes? Stayed in the same, same clothes. Same clothes, okay. Mm -hmm. um, all I did was I usually wear an undershirt, these are the pants I wear, okay. and then my button down, these black button down with tuck in and wear an apron, I keep them hanging in the back. Okay. Hanger. Do you keep other clothes in your car? Are there are there clothes in your car? There's just my work. Just random clothes thrown in the car. Clothes, maybe my son's hoodie. Okay. All right. Here's something I, I gotta ask you. What if I were to tell you that we did find some clothing near the scene um, of where Jonathan was killed, and we seized that clothing? submitting it for DNA, okay. would there be any reason why that DNA would come back to you? No. So there's no reason, no reason at all that this clothing would come back to you. No. I just want to make sure, because if it does, then that tells me that right now you're lying, you're not being truthful with me. Yeah, I don't know why there would be any of my clothing anywhere around there. Okay. Because it's all, whenever I looked in my car today, it was all there. Okay. There. Okay, I, I just, again, I'm just double checking because if it does come back, then that's going to start raising questions. I, mean, I think you've been truthful with me so far. Okay, but if that comes back and it's yours, then I'm going to start doubting some of the things you're telling me. I understand. Okay, I, I'm sure you understand. Okay. Um, how did you feel when you, when you heard that um, Jonathan was was killed or, or died. I mean, right. how, how, I started crying. Yeah. I mean, I was in shock. Mm -hmm. I was not wanting to believe it at all. I thought that maybe it was a mistake, you get the wrong person. But whenever that picture came up on that app and his name, it, it sunk in how sunk real in. it was. So, yeah. And how'd your husband feel about it? Well, we were both upset. I mean, why would this happen to someone so young? Mm -hmm. Over what? You know, what is, I don't, that's what I don't understand. Well, that's what we're what trying to figure it? out. What, what, why what, would someone... Why do you think somebody would do that? Honestly, if he got into the wrong crowd of people and mm -hmm. he had a drug problem, right. I don't, I don't right. know how that goes down with it or who he owed money to. That's the only thing I can think of. Because he wasn't, he wasn't a bad guy. He was awesome. I mean, he was always good to us, you know, whenever sure. he was good to my son. We Good to the, 
good to you to the point where he sets up an armed robbery at your house? See, that's what I don't understand if that was him. No one told me that he admitted to something like that. Yeah, he did. He did. Because I for sure wouldn't have gone over there and been, right. you know, like, what's going on? And he Your husband never told you? Pulling the wool over my eyes. Your eye. husband never told you about a conversation you had with him over the phone? No. Never told you about, you know, no. talking with John and... John said that he set this whole thing up, and your husband knew about it. No. Nothing. Mm-mm. And you and your husband are pretty close? Yeah. Yeah. We, we are close. And that's what's baffling to me, because I know if that conversation, because we were rattling our brains, why and who would do that? Mm-hmm. And then we didn't know if it had something to do with the past shooting where he got shot at, because... When he was being helicoptered in the, in the ambulance, they were screaming his name and address and everything at him. So we're like, is that related? Because I know where we live, but sure. Sure. never um, thought that John would be behind. That doesn't seem like it was in his character. Okay. Your husband with, with guns. You ever seen him with guns? Way back in the day. Okay. What kind of guns? We used to have. He had a... Um, a rifle, like a hunting rifle, but when he got into trouble, we took that to his dad's house to hold on to it. Okay. Now, did you, did you know that your, your, your dad has said that he's seen him with guns in the house? No, and I don't even know where these said guns yeah. are. Okay. You've never seen a gun in your house? Mm-mm. We had a little pellet gun. I know that one looks like a... Uh, Okay. Um, there was some evidence found at the scene, and it's actually things that were inside the gun. You know, every time you shoot a gun, things come out, things get ejected, and we found two of those things that were ejected. And everybody who puts guns together, everybody who puts ammo inside guns, they always touch it. Mm-hmm. DNA. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you, is there any reason that the DNA is going to come back from your husband? Not that. Or to somebody that you know, because I'm telling you, if you were just driving around and somebody was with you and they just told you to stop and you didn't know what was going on, then you need to let us know now. Okay. Because if you don't, then it makes it look like that you have something to do with this. Right. Okay. And yeah. I don't want you to think that. Okay. I don't want you to feel like that. If you had no idea what was going to happen, if you had no idea that this was going to get out of hand, then you need to let us know. Okay. If you're trying to protect somebody, right now you got to take care of yourself. Okay. You need to protect yourself. But you got to tell me everything. You got to tell me what's going on. I feel like I'm left out of the loop. Like left out of the loop of what? Yeah, and, and I mean maybe, I keep maybe, hearing they, maybe this they did stuff, leave, but maybe they did leave you out of the loop and you didn't know what was going on. Somebody just asked you for a ride over there and you didn't know what happened. But really, I mean, I didn't get anybody. I didn't pick up anybody. I didn't I didn't do anything with anybody. I mean I so there was nobody else in your car that night? No. Even though our video shows that there's somebody else in the passenger seat? I mean, I don't know if there was my clothes. I'm not sure who would have what been. What do you mean your clothes? My work clothes hanging in there. I mean, that's No, kind of... no, this was clearly a person with a face. I know it shouldn't be him. I know it wouldn't be him. Then who was it? Who was in your car? Not saying that they shot at anybody, but there was somebody in your car. If you were just giving somebody a ride somewhere, you got to let us know. Uh, if it's somebody other than your husband, we're not, I'm not going to go back and tell your husband, hey, guess what? She has somebody else in the car with her. You know, that's, that's not what I do. Okay, that, that's not for me to do. Okay, so if you have somebody else in the car, let me know. I mean, who, else, who else was in the car with you? 
I I don't recall anyone being in the car. I really don't. Like I I am rattling my brain as to trying to piece even where I drove, and I can't okay. think of everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're saying there's nobody in your car, you won't have a problem if we search your car. Why would you need to search the car? So that we can try to get DNA from the passenger seat that was with the person that was in your car. But wouldn't that bring up all kinds of people that were in my car? Not if you haven't had somebody in there over the past week, have you? I mean, gosh, now I don't even know who. I give people rides. I've definitely had, you know, my husband's driven the car. He's had people in the car. Okay. You know, I, I okay. don't know we, about I mean, we that could, one. We could eliminate them. Okay, the people you identify in the car, we can eliminate them from being in your car. If I think there's somebody else else in your car that you're just not sharing with me. I, you know, I mean, maybe now is the time for me to go ahead and get my lawyer because I'm, I feel like I'm... I'm asking a simple question. I'm confused as to what is going on and, I mean, I understand why I'm here, but I don't know why I would be put, like, as a suspect. Well, because your car was within 10 feet at the same time of a homicide. Well, you say 10 feet. And okay, then... well, within a, 10 yards. 10 yards of his house. Okay, because there's one point when you did drive by. And shortly thereafter is when this happened. Do you think that that's a coincidence? I mean, yeah, it could be a coincidence. It could Who knows be. what's. It could be, but you also went truthful with us when we asked you about the home invasion. You weren't truthful with us with your husband with guns. Well, I don't think that's relevant to this homicide. Well, why wouldn't it be? See, our job is to not only find the person that did this, but it's also to get rid of or take, you know, kick these people off of our potential suspect list. And by you not being truthful with us... That's kind of creating a well, little red flag saying, you know what? Uh, I'm not being truthful. It's I'm still trying you. to remember. Hey, quit for a second. Yeah.
think was going on? You asked for a lawyer, so I can't continue questioning until you get one. Okay? Um, I do appreciate your cooperation. I appreciate you coming down here, taking the time to speak with us. Um, what I'll do is I'll walk you out. And um, somebody gave you a ride down here? Okay, we'll get you a ride back if that's what you want. Okay. I, you know, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed and I... Of course. No, I, I know, completely I, understand. You're, you've been in the police department for a long time. You know, you're getting very specific questions. I understand. I don't blame you. I don't judge you. You know, um, but if there's a point in time. Um, I would love to have your card. So sure. Whenever. Sure. Let me see if I have a card. If, if there is something that sure. I hear that sure. I can share, that. I will. Absolutely. I will definitely do that because if someone close to me is pulling the wool yeah. over my eyes. You're better off calling my phone number down there with the, the stars next to it. Okay. That's myself, and I always got it on me, okay? Okay. Feel free to call me anytime. Okay. Okay. Yes, I You got any questions that. for me before I walk you out? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, is there... I don't need to sign any more of that, do No. I? No, but you know what? i I got to give you a copy of this. Okay. Now... The investigation is going to be ongoing. Yes, it is. Is there anything that I should be waiting for in the mail or no, just... No, we don't send anything in the mail or anything like that. Okay. Um, no. Okay. No. That's all. Following their conversation with Colette, during which she requested legal representation, the police initiated a more thorough inquiry into her account. It became evident that they needed to further explore the circumstances surrounding her visit to John's residence. Consequently, the decision was made to interview her husband, Samuel Collins, the following day at the police station. This interview aimed to ascertain whether Sam's narrative aligned with Colette's regarding the reasons for her presence at John's residence that fateful night. After speaking with Colette, and her asking for an attorney, police started to dig deeper into her story and decide they need to speak to her husband, Sam Collins, next. Sam is brought into the police station the next day to see if his story matches with Colette's regarding why she was at John's that night. Sam, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Good. I'm Lieutenant Patrick and nice I nice you met you. Let's get her on them. Appreciate you coming in. Um, can I get you any water or... Uh... Coke or anything like that. Here you go. You're not thirsty. Like you like well. Yeah, pretty much. Did. Oh, okay. I just right. had some sweet tea on the way here, so you good. Um, you good? One, one thing we didn't do, and normally we do it before people come in. You see, we disarmed ourselves. I just got a frisky real quick. I don't have to search right. pockets. It's yeah, I just got like, like an empty cigarette pack and a right. few bottles. It's just for our safety. That's yeah. all. Yeah. So, first off, uh, you were saying, you know, the stuff you'd heard about who John was hanging out with and he was conspiring to get Isaiah mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And who were the people again that... He, well, he was angry with Isaiah because he was spending, I mean, John was spending bukus of money with him on pills, like, every day. He'd go through... 10 to 15 of them things a day, and they're selling them at $30 a piece. You got to think that's like $400 a day. Mm -hmm. Have it done um, with support. <coughs> so, all of a sudden, he started having money trouble with the sipping cow thing or whatever. And he had been telling me about it because he'd stop by sometimes on break, vent to me about this and that about business because he's like, I can talk to you. You're a little bit smarter than those guys or whatever, and you understand. And, um, so he was having trouble with that and ran out of money. And um, he was angry because they wouldn't either front him pills for later or just give him some or whatever because he felt he spent so much money. Why not? And um, he started complaining. And this is the hearsay that I all get from Josh. Like some of it John told me <coughs> about how he was angry with him, but most of it came from Josh like the specifics, but um, he just said that 
well, we all need to band together and get him or whatever. And I'm like, what does he mean, band together? Like, who's banding together? I'm not, like, I'm not banding together with anybody for anything that he has going on. I know that. I told that Before to Before you go further, how do you know John? Like, what's what's your relationship with him? <coughs> <coughs> I mean, how, uh, just through mutual meet? friends. I just met him through um, through Josh. Through Josh. Okay. Okay. And at the time, you know, I had just got injured, and I was seeking more medicine as well. So when I first hurt this leg over a year ago is when the hospital sent me out with basically no medicine. So I went on the hunt for medicine. Okay. And that's how I ended up getting intertwined with these people and everything because I was buying pills to try and... Now, Sam, before we go any further, I just want to let you know that you were not in custody and that you were free to leave any time. Okay. Okay. We, we just we just want to question you about you know, what you know about yeah. uh, John and everything else like that. Totally so understand. I don't want you to think yeah, that my full we're not coercing you or anything like that, yeah. that you're, you're in your own free will yeah. and, and that we appreciate any help yeah. that you do for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm willing to help. So you said you mentioned um, who would you who would you buy the pills from? Same person that John was? Isaiah Walker. Isaiah Walker. Okay. If I showed you a picture of Isaiah, would you be able to identify him? Yeah. Did he have any street names or anything like that? Talk. Talk. Yeah, like TikTok. He takes forever. <laughs> That's the same thing Josh <laughs> said. Um, <coughs> have you? Uh, I any, can't believe he didn't tell y'all. Well, anyway, we'll get to that, but go ahead. Any other street names that, that talk goes by? V. V, okay. The letter V. And how long has talk or V been out around this area? Since right before I got shot, I started hearing about him, so about a year and a couple months. A year and a couple months that he's been doing his thing here. Do you know what kind of car he drives or how he gets around? He never drives. He catches rides, or they'll rent a car, and somebody else will drive. He's got one really big, fat guy that's usually with him. He's got really dark, like, stripes right here on his face. And he's stripes. like, well, it's just... Like birthmarks or something? It's not birthmarks, I guess. I don't know, he's a black guy, and he's really, really fat. But for whatever reason, his face, you know, kind of sags, and right here is just dark. Like, if you saw him, you would see it. I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it doesn't look, really look like a birth defect. It's the difference in his skin. It might be from being overweight or whatever. I don't know because he's, you know, really overweight. Okay. Big um, time. Take me, what, your relationship with John. Uh, you know, you guys ever have any issues? Or, I mean, how, how, Tell me, like, how many times did you see him? You know, did he come over every day? Did you go over to his house? I went over to his house one time, and he generally would come over to my house. And for a while there, for a couple weeks there, he came over nearly every day. Mm -hmm. But that I, it was out of convenience, you know, that he, his work is there and his home was there, I think. And he would call me just to shoot the breeze or whatever because he know, you know, that I'd probably be home and I'd sit there and smoke a cigarette with him in the driveway. Right. Yeah. Right. So, what, um, he did end up asking me for money whenever he, those Pittman cow things started falling off. He said he had some bills gone. He wanted to borrow some money. I did loan him some money. Now, we did have that. an issue with that, but he actually gave me this watch, which I've been wearing in his, his honor watch. ever since it happened. Because right before he started asking me for money, he came to me and brought me this. And he said, Here, I want to give you this watch, which this one's too tight. His other watches he showed me actually fit, so I, I kind of think maybe he found this one or something because it's not the same length as his other ones, but probably... When did he give that to you? That was about a month and a half ago. And I, think, I think my wife was there when he did that, but it was strange to me even that he did that, but I think it was because he knew he was going to ask me for something soon, you know, because he came over and he was like, I want to give you this watch. He said, because I know you like watches and you like citizens because I have a small little collection, nothing real extravagant, you know, mm -hmm. and he likes to show off, so he would, you know, show me his Cartier watch or whatever, and he came over one day and brought me this and said, um, I want to give you this citizen. I was like, you don't have to do that, man. You know, it's 
good. And he's like, no, I want you to have it. I'm like, okay. And I thought it was a little weird. But no, I mean, we're not here to jam you up in any way. Yeah. But I just need complete honesty from you, okay? Um, have you ever had anything in your house that you sold to him, such as narcotics or anything like that? No. You never sold him any drugs? No. Did you ever let him have any drugs that you had in the house before? What do you mean you're not trying to jam me up? I don't remember what kind of question. Why saying, do you want to know? What or? I'm saying is I'm not going to arrest you for distribution of whatever you gave him. I'm just trying to establish a relationship that you had with him. Yes, he did come over, and I did give him some medicine from okay. time to time, okay. yes. And did he pay for that medicine? Or did he give you, like, items like a watch for that? Well, I think the reason he gave me this watch is because he knew he wasn't going to have any money, and it was sort of his okay. way of buttering me up. I got you. And then he told me he was going to pay me later, and that was basically how our thing went. He's was like, well, I'll pay you later. You know I'm good for it because... I got these stocks and this going on and these comic books and you know about my watches, so why don't you just give me those and I'll pay you later. Right. So I gave him some and gave him some and gave him some and then he didn't he didn't pay me. But about how many total do you think he got from you over over however long that was? You're telling me you're not going to jam me up. And you're right. Right. Listen, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, you're not even in our jurisdiction. Okay, you're okay. actually in Beaver County jurisdiction with the Bluffton Police Department. So I'm not here. We're here to investigate a homicide. Yeah. Okay, we're not here to investigate a drug case. Okay. Yeah, so. that. I mean, that was somewhat our relationship because he knows I get medicine. Okay. So I can have it sometimes, and I knew other people, and I know he knew I knew Isaiah as well. Mm -hmm. So. There was that relationship there because there was part of the time, some of the time where I did have some yeah. of Isaiah's and then he would come and get them and go to work if, or whatever. Now, if, if he knew that. <coughs> Actually, I think Isaiah might have been the first person to put me in touch with him now that I think about if it. If you both knew Isaiah, why would he not go directly to Isaiah and go to you instead? Convenience. As far as location or? Location and. Or less money or. Not less money, or just like less time. Okay. That, that's obviously why you call him TikTok, yeah. right? He takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. okay. But, I mean, I quit doing all that, like, that's fine. as soon as I, I lost that money. Like, I believe you, man. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Would, would John have I used Because, I mean, I know y'all have probably seen into my past, you know. I used to do a lot of stupid stuff. I used to deal drugs. I got in trouble for it. Okay. Ended up getting shot over a year ago. And ever Was since then, you know. I don't really want to talk about it, but you know, I was in Allendale in the wrong place at the wrong time for if that tells you anything. Okay. So mm -hmm. after all that, you know, I've really just been standing back from it, you know what I mean? And then the pill thing was just there because of my leg or whatever, and that's how I ended up getting involved with these people. And then Josh Moore and whatever, but go ahead. Let's, let's Do you think that John might have mistakenly got in his head that you were still selling and had, had money in the house and stuff like that? Or? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, I told him at that point in time, I was like, I don't know why anybody, because he came to me and was like, yeah, I heard at the bar these guys talking, and they were talking about how you're an easy mark. And I was like, easy mark? I was like, what are what am I marked for? I was like, I don't have anything, dude. And I was like, I don't. <laughs> what do you say that to you? This was uh, during the week prior to when I made that call or whenever I saw the guys on the porch or whatever. So a week before, he tells you that you're an easy mark? <clears throat> that he heard that I was an easy mark okay. from some guys at the bar. Tell me about this incident. And at the time, he was already owing me the money and kept saying, well, it'll be a couple of days, it'll be whenever, it'll be whenever, which I didn't, right. I didn't ever. Okay. Tell me about this incident that occurred, these guys coming up to your house, because I'm not too familiar. At first, with I was in my bedroom one night, and... um I hear somebody tampering with the AC unit, and I go out first, and, and my stepmother, or my mother-in-law, I mean, she um, she thinks it's raccoons, because she'll throw um, scraps out in the yard, or whatever. She's like, oh, it's probably a raccoon, I've seen them out there, you know? So I go out there, and I look, and I don't see anything, and I go back in my room, and then the next time I hear it, I hear somebody kind of talking. So I knew somebody was out there, and I just stayed quiet. And um, that's when I heard 
I thought I heard something on the porch. And we had sure. lights that were lit up, which they ended up tampering with them to where they don't work now. Wow. Yeah. Um, so they were on my porch, and I looked through by my wife's vanity in our bedroom. I could see through the blinds, and I could see over, and I just saw a guy in a yellow jacket and then another figure. I, don't, I couldn't really tell much more because I, I went back immediately, you know. And then, so whenever I saw that, I figured I'd try to spook them. So then I flipped the lights on in my room and came out in the den and flipped the lights on. I like, get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? Like, we're calling 911. Which we didn't. I just heard them bolt, and I could hear them running across the yard. And then I waited a little while, and I saw a car leave from down the road hauling butt. Did they ever fire any shots at you? Mm-hmm. How do you, uh, from my understanding, there were some rounds, there were some bullet holes in, in your trailer. In my house? Yeah. Yeah, there are. There were some that were there when we moved in. So that didn't, so there were no bullet shots this night? This night that these guys came to the house, they didn't shoot at you, is what I'm saying? No. Okay. And you said you I mean, that's what, that's kind of what I made Josh think, because Josh starts all the rumors. Okay. So I did that on purpose. Okay. To try and hopefully make them think it's more severe so that maybe they leave me alone or something. You know what so I mean? Who, I figured if I told that to Josh, so maybe he What did you tell around. Josh? Because <clears throat> now I'm a little confused. What What did you tell Josh? I to told Josh that some guys came in and shot at me. Okay. And that I shot at them, but I don't own guns. Okay. And, you and I was lying when I said that. That you, never happened. You told him this. Because you wanted to get the word out there or something? I would, that's what I wanted him to think, that I was armed, I guess. That okay. was my way of making him think that I was armed or if somebody came in my house, I could get rid of so them or whatever. Because obviously I can't have a gun and I feel vulnerable right. over there. Okay. Who, you know, who, who take, home? Yeah, who take home? me back to that. Is my wife showed up. Who was home when? When, when, when they came to on your Just me. It was just you at home. Well, no, well my wife, yeah. She came home immediately after. But didn't you just say that your mother-in-law was there? You just said she, that you she said some about the raccoon. And I quote, no, she was talking about the house that time of robbery. No, I didn't say anything about a robbery. Not robbery. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She was, she was in the house. You were like, you need to take better notes. Okay. She was there the night when I saw the guys on the porch. Now the other now there was a few nights that I heard people out there and stuff. Now the night that he's talking about when my door supposedly got kicked in, she wasn't there. I was there. Okay. And I did think that I heard some so people tell out. Tell me about that incident. What happened with that one? That one basically I heard some guys on the porch again, I thought. So I flipped the lights on out there, and I thought that I heard footsteps. And this is just stuff that I think that I'm hearing, you know. And I'm pretty sure that I saw a figure run across my yard when I looked out the kitchen. And um, okay. Did they fire the shots at you that day? No. Okay. Now, which story did you tell Josh? Did you tell him about I don't Alex remember Cooper? exactly. What okay. I told Josh. Okay, because I'm just trying to piece together what Josh said. Well, Josh, what, you got to think about Josh too. Is he'll, he tells a whole lot, but only a certain percentage of it is true. Okay. Because he likes to sway people to think different things, and you know that's why he's protecting Isaiah because that's his meal ticket. Okay. Now let me ask you on on this first time that these guys came to your house with your mother-in-law in the house, did you all call 911? Uh huh. Okay. What about the second time that? Supposedly yeah, you were there alone. Did you call 911? I called, yeah, I called 911. You did call 911. Okay, and did the police come out? No. She called back, and oh, um, the dispatch lady. Okay. And I said um, that basically my wife was in the house, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. She wasn't responding, and that she did, and we were fine. And that was it. Which she had just showed up, and I was worried about her because I saw her car, actually, and I was the door was open, and I went outside, and I saw her car, and she wasn't there, but she had gone so these guys looking you... for somebody. She got out of her car and went around the building. I didn't see her. I'm like, oh, my gosh, and I called 911, and then I was like, baby, baby, and then she talked back to me and came walking over, and that's when the lady called, and I told her that I was worried about my wife, and okay. she's fine. These guys that keep coming back to your house, I mean, what 
they're coming back multiple times. I mean, that's got to be concerning for you. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, and you say you don't have any weapons in the house or anything like that. No. I mean, that would draw me to, you know, <coughs> what, what are you guys doing for security, added security for these guys to come back to the house? If these guys keep coming back, I mean, what's preventing them from coming back again, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, well, I put the word out that I called the police and stuff like okay. that, and I told okay. Josh and that um, I, I told him that we had new cameras up and stuff that aren't there, which we do have one little camera that we got, and we didn't end up getting any footage. But How do you think these guys found out about your house? Um, I honestly think... Either they already knew about it because of six months ago, before I got shot, they, I had, I was selling weed, mm -hmm. and some of those guys from down on the boys knew about me. And there was one guy that calls himself P, keeps his eyebrows shaved, and his hat cocked to the side. Now, he's one of the only people from down that way that would know where my house is. Um, unless John told him where it was, you know, but I don't know why he is, would. Or is P a black male, white male? Black male. Black male. Which I haven't seen him in a long time, but okay. he was around, you know, during when somebody may think I had a lot going on, because that's what I told John. I'm like, I don't know why they think that mm -hmm. there's anything to get here, because I don't have anything, <laughs> like... Sure. I don't have any weed anymore. I was like, all I have is my medication. I was like, and I really don't have much money, you know. I mean, all, we've got our TVs and stuff in there, but that's it. I was like, I don't understand. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Why he said, know. and then John told me, he said, well, I think somebody's got either got some six-month-old information or they just got the wrong information. That's because, what John told you? Yeah. He said, because for whatever reason, they think that, you're a mark for them to try to get. Um, that night when you were home by yourself, did you, prior to this happening, people being on your back porch, did you have anybody over that night? Um, John came over that John day. John was over that day? What time was he over there? He was over there. He came over in the morning at 10 or 11. He left for about an hour. He came back. So he left for an hour, then came back, and then he and I went to Home Depot and actually picked up a wireless camera, and I picked up some clamp lights to try and put sure. some lighting around, mm -hmm. and um, he basically hung out with me, but he was acting really nervous and stuff, too. Like, Why do you think he was acting nervous? I don't know. He was just... How long he was, he was, it seemed like he was like wiping sweat and he just kept yeah. smoking cigarettes. After he left, how long was it after he left that these guys supposedly came to your house? Um, a matter of probably 30 minutes to an hour. You don't find that out? A little bit, yeah. Did you talk I mean, to I asked him about it. Yeah, what did he say? He said, um, he said, well, I went and talked to all the guys that I know and told them that you were my friend and not to go over there. And. I said, well, you sure you don't have nothing, you don't know anything about it? He was like, no, dude, I promise I don't. He said, all I know is the stuff that I heard at the bar. He said, but I'll see what I can find out and see what I hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't directly think that immediately, you know, that. Okay. I mean, because I don't know why he would do that, because I didn't, you know, because he knew that I didn't have anything, so I didn't see his motive. Did he ever Other than the fact that he owed me a little bit of money, but what, sir, you know, that's not enough money for that. Do you ever recall a conversation you had with him over the phone in which he told you that he set you up, he was the one that set it up? No. no. Do y'all have that conversation? Because no. I'd like to hear no. it. No, I just, this is just through hearsay. So That's Josh. You know, know what? That was, Josh is the one that told me that. He told me that he sort of admitted it, but he never told me specifically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how'd you feel? John never you? called me and told me Okay, how would you feel yeah. after Josh told you that, you know, about John? I mean, I wasn't real happy about no, it, but I also either. didn't really believe it because it's Josh. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about um, your relationship with your wife. I mean, you guys have been married for how long? 
14 years. 14 years. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, did you guys have like a rocky point? To yeah. Learn? What happened with A couple that? years ago, um, she just, I don't know, we were having issues. And I think with her, it might have been some addiction issues she was having with pills. And I was trying to get her to stop, and she didn't want to stop. So she was addicted to pills? Yeah, from her cancer. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and I was just trying to get her to stop, but when she gets in that mind frame, she mm-hmm. there's no stop, there's F you, because you want me to stop, or you're trying to stop me. And mm-hmm. That's the way she was then, because whenever she went through cancer, they gave her so much medicine, it was ridiculous, and so then afterwards, I tried to help her to get off of it, you know, and it wasn't very much longer that she ended up taking off, but um, she ended up going up to Augusta and um, told me she was staying with her mother and her aunt and took my son up there. So you were in the house by yourself. How long How long did she do that for? How many, was it that was for like a week, week and a half. A week, week and a half, okay. And um, I ended up you know, wondering what, you know, where the heck is my son now, you know, because I've always been in his life. I've been the constant thing in his life. And um, so I ended up calling up her mom, and I'm like, where is my son? I want my son back. I said, I can't get a hold of my wife. I said, she's been telling me. Well, I did get a hold of her a little bit. I said, but I could barely get a hold of her when I did. She was being rude. She tells me that she's been over there with you. She's like, I haven't seen her in days. I said, well, I want my son back. So... Um, I looked into my phone records and realized that she was talking to somebody up there. She was talking to... Why are you looking around because I'm looking there? I know, because I'm looking for my phone, that's all. <laughs> that's all. That's what I do when I'm thinking about it. No, no, I, there wasn't had nothing to do with it. To try to remember. Oh, okay. Oh, ahead, go anyway, ahead. um, so... Yeah, that went on. I saw on her phone that she'd been talking to another man, and I figured out who it was, and it's a guy named David Heyman, and it turns out that it was her stepmother's brother, which is just terrible to me. So, or no, at that time, I didn't realize that. I'm trying to remember exactly how it happened. Oh, no, this, this, is, this is how it went. The first time when she left and did that, she came back all screwed up on drugs is what happened. And that was before she left. Then, a few months later, after I got her to kind of stop the pills then, I guess she really didn't want to. And this is when she really took off and went to Augusta. And I had my son this time. And, um, shit, I can't, I can't remember. I don't, it's something I don't like to remember. That's okay. You know what I mean? I really don't want to talk about it. No, that's that's fine. Okay, so we split up for about a year and some change, Mm -hmm. almost two years, and got back together in the middle of it for a little bit, you know, sure. But then, I'm trying to think, she came back in April, not last April, but I believe the April before, so we've been together ever since then. How was how was her relationship with John? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I know that he took a liking to her. Mm-hmm. That I could tell a little bit. Yeah, you know. I mean, like, just he, they were smoking a cigarette on the porch together one day, and he came in and he goes, "Oh, she's just so nice and so sweet and pretty. You're so lucky." Just that. And how'd that make you feel? Good. Good. Well, yeah. yeah, anytime somebody compliments your girl, you feel good, right? Yeah. Um, so you didn't feel he was stepping over the line or anything. It was just that he, he liked her. It was a compliment. Okay. 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 All right. Um, I got to ask you, um, are you aware that she was over at his house the night he was murdered? Um, she did mention to me when she came home that she stopped by there. Why did she tell you she didn't tell me? No, I don't know if you knew or not. That's what I'm oh. asking. If, if you knew that she was. No, she told there. me that she stopped by. Okay. 
Does she normally stop by his house? Uh, that's what I asked her. <laughs> yeah. And she said no. She said she just wanted to stop by just because she had um was concerned about him or whatever. Okay. Now, Tuesday night, where were you? I was at home. You were at home? With my son and okay. what my mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law was home, too. You remember what time she came in that night? I think it was like one thirty or so. One thirty? Okay. Maybe. I mean, do you she woke her, me up briefly, do you but I didn't her, really. Do you remember like, her demeanor? She uh, was drunk. She was drunk? Yes. Okay. And where did she say she was drinking at? I didn't really ask. You did ask? I just assumed it was at work, and then, I don't know, at that point in time at night, I just didn't right. get into it, really. Right. I just kind of went back to bed and figured she she'd didn't talk tell about you, it the next day. She didn't tell you why she was late coming home? What time does she normally come home? Sometimes it is kind of late like that. Okay. But I don't, you know. So you she works at Succession, so sometimes the guys will stay out there and drink late, you know. So sometimes they stay later, and she'll cocktail waitress, and sometimes not. Okay. Just depends. I mean, I did ask her the next day, have you been going over there? I was like, because, you know, because Josh called me and told me what happened. And then I was like, and then she said, well, I was over there yesterday, last night. And I was like, why were you over there? <laughs> you know, right. like, what right. the heck are you doing over there? And that's when she told me. And well, I stopped by because I was concerned. I was like, well, is this something that you've been doing? I was like, because I would like to know. Right. Do you think I was that like, she might have been intimate with him? Sure, hope not. I mean, because, and, and not to bring up a, a sore subject with you, but you remember her behavior when she did dealt with your stepmom's son. Does she kind of exhibit the same behaviors over the past couple of weeks with John? No? No. I mean, I wasn't suspicious I of mean, her. You, anyway. you know her more than anybody. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. You know, if you notice any, any different in her change in her behavior or anything like no. that. No. And she's not, she can't really have sex that well because of her. Um, uh, the procedures they did when she had cancer, her, okay. her vagina has, has drawn up very, very tight. She also doesn't really have a sex drive because she's been going through menopause. So okay. sex is not really the first thing on her mind. Yeah. Okay. I don't think. I mean, she likes to be treated nice and, sure. to, you know, for me to be nice to her and kiss on her, you know, and stuff like that sure. and hugging. But, you know, she's not like... She doesn't really get horny, per se. <laughs> but if you could show me the clothes you found over there, I can tell you if they're hers. Uh, she already told me y'all found some clo some girls' clothes or something and asked if her DNA was going to be yeah, on Yeah, we're getting those tested as we speak, so we don't have them here. Um, well, unfortunately, I can't show them to you because they're up at the BCSO. Right? What were they? What they look like? Um, they were panties. What color? Tell me what color she has. I mean, she has different ones. Okay. Any um, idea what she was wearing that day as far as color? Uh, yeah. Maybe black. Black. Okay. Were they black? Um, I don't remember. I, I'm not the one who sees the paintings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I just don't, I don't think that she would do that, and I certainly don't think she would leave her clothes there. Right. Do you think she would be involved with anything to hurt John? John? She never spoke ill will of him or? No. Okay. Who do you think was involved with this? I honestly think that he incurred a drug debt with somebody else. Either the guys that, because I think from what Josh was telling me, he was trying to help these couple of guys rob somebody. Like, they were planning on trying to rob Isaiah. Like, they wanted him to pull, just pull up on Gophy or something at the stop sign, and they were going to run up on him and rob him. And he asked Josh, should I do it, man? Should, that, should I, I do you, it? Who'd you learn that from? From Josh. Josh told you that? Yeah. Okay. He, he said that, yeah, he said that John told him, you know, that that's what he was going to try to do. And he said, do you think I should do it? Has John ever said, asked, told you that, that he was, gonna, he was asked to do that? Um, he, 
he did mention to me before that he wanted to rob Isaiah. Okay. But he never told me specifically, like, how or when or what, you know. When did he first start talking about it? Whenever he was coming over to my house and uh, getting those things from me for free. That was around the time then. Because he was getting angry with Isaiah because he wouldn't just give them to him. So he was getting angry with him because he couldn't get what he wanted. Right. Sam. So I think either Isaiah and them had something to do with it because it's awful coincidental that the day before, John calls Isaiah or he called this other guy and Isaiah was listening. This is what I get from Josh. And he's not going to tell you this because he wants to protect his pill income, mm -hmm. which is why Josh doesn't like me right now because I don't help him with pill income. Okay. And he said that John called up and told whoever he was talking to over speakerphone, he said that the, the DEA is building a case against talk, and if he's not arrested this week, then I'm going to get him myself. Do you know do you know when he made that phone call? Did y'all say when he made that phone call? That would be... You said it was the day before? The days? day before something happened, so it would be... Death. Well, I think it was... No, I think it was Tuesday. It was the day he was murdered. It was either Monday or Tuesday. Think Tuesday. And y'all said that he called from his phone. From John. John called from his John's phone. From John's phone. Yeah. Okay. And he and he he said that, which he had been saying stuff similar to that for a while. Mm -hmm. You know. So I don't know if they took it personal or they thought he was just blowing more smoke because he's angry they wouldn't give him pills or what. But my thoughts are that either it has something to do with the way that he had been threatening them with police action and stuff. And they kept hearing about him trying to get those two guys to rob him. Or... And which, I, two, which two guys was, was that again? That was, I'm, yeah. I'm not exactly sure, but I got a vague answer from John that it's like Adrian Jones and possibly Kenny. The boys, Kenny. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, everybody knows yeah. that. Um, let me ask you something. And our job is not only to develop suspects, it's also to eliminate, eliminate them. And, and that's why we're here, and, and that's why I appreciate you being here. A couple of things that I ask if you would give us consent for is, one, your DNA. Would you mind giving us your DNA? So Y'all already have my DNA. But yeah, who has your I don't Sled does. No, uh, we're not sled. We're, we're bluff. Oh, okay. so, yeah, we have a separate database. Yeah. And then two, would would you give us consent to search your house and your vehicle? No. You want to give us consent to search your house and vehicle? No, I that's just okay. Feels like invasion of my privacy, and there's that's fine. That's why we asked for consent. There. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, I figured I'd ask. You know, again, that just helps eliminate you more. Just to show that there's no guns in the house or anything like that. I mean, Sled's involved in the investigation, and they have my DNA. I paid for it. I, I don't know anything about Sled having your DNA. All it's because I was a convicted felon. All we got to do is just take a quick swab of your mouth, and, and you're done. So you mind doing that for us? I mean, we won't come to your house. We won't search it. You can't, I mean, we can't search it without your consent. Okay, just figured. You just check that off the list, that's all. Okay? Uh, sit back here. Oh, okay. If you got more questions for him, just... Okay. Um, well, so as far as when he's, he's so he's been he told you that he was wanting to um, rob Isaiah. He said that was back in the time that he's hanging out at your house a lot. So that was probably around the beginning of this month, the end of September time frame. Is that when it was? Yeah. Um, so right around, the, shortly after Sip and Cal went under, basically, was when he mm -hmm. really started hanging out a lot. Okay. Um, did he ever mention people or, or businesses he was indebted to? No. Um, 
Now, I, I know that he said that he knows the guys on Gothi and some guy named Jafar. Jafar? He's supposedly one of the bigger players over there. And, um, How, how did like what did he give you as far as his relationship with Jafar? Uh, nothing much, just that he knows him and they respect him because he employed some of his family at the restaurant. Jafar respects John because he employed his family. Yeah, that's what he was saying. <coughs> and I think you know he could have possibly you know racked up a drug debt with them as well. So. So it sounds like he was basically just swiping up pills wherever he could find them. You know, like anybody that would give them to him because obviously he didn't have any money. So it's basically anybody, anybody that would hand him out. Yeah, he'd take him. Um, when did he start getting real heavy into pills like that, do you know? Probably a few years ago. Oh, so he's been a constant habit for a while? With um, with your wife, when we were talking to her yesterday, she uh, seemed to be under the impression that the situation at your house was a little bit more involved than just you guys on your back porch. She she thought they actually tried, made a solid effort to get into the house, um, and, and kicked at your door and that sort of. Is there any reason why she she would have believed that instead of maybe because right when she got home the door was swung open and okay and why was that because I left it open okay when you uh, came outside gotcha yeah, that makes sense um Hey, uh, Sam, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Something, sir. Who's that? You know that person? Yeah. Who's that? I believe his name's Terrence. Terrence? I don't know, though. He might have been, he might have showed me somebody else's ID at the time. Why are you asking me about him? I'm curious. Because I'm asking if... That have you ever met V or TikTok? This is not him. That's not him. This is another dude that I know that calls himself Zip or Ziploc. I thought his name was Terrence. This is Isaiah Walker. I don't know. I don't know. Is this just a name? no? This is another guy that just got out of prison. That um that I used to know that I ran into recently, and now he, his hair is cut short, and he works at A-plus moving or something. Okay. How about this guy? Nothing. I've never seen him, but that must be that Adrian Jones guy or something. you ever seen this guy? This, let me tell you. You're holding it, like, so far away, I don't have very good eyes. Honestly, no. I would recognize and remember that face. Do you have relatives? Sisters, brothers? I have a stepsister in town. You have a stepsister? Does she have any children? Yeah. Where are their names? Christopher and Robert. Christopher and Robert? They're little kids. Okay. How about... Any other relatives or anything like that? What do you mean? Like, do you have other sisters or brothers? Or yeah. Yeah, I have a brother and a half brother and step brother and a step sister. Do you do you have a half brother or have a half brother or you have somebody with a family member that has uh, biracial children? No. The reason why I'm asking is because this person is supposedly related to Wade Collins. Uh, 
No, I just wasn't sure. If no, he's not related to me. No, he's not related to uh-uh. you. We have, right we have right beside your cheek there. So you're saying that's definitely not that's TikTok not him. Or D or whatever it's no. Isaiah. Well, Josh probably told you it was because he didn't want to tell you who he really was. Okay. And his, this guy's name is Jeremiah? I think his name's Terrence. Terrence? He was living in 1313 in Josh's neighborhood in Plantation Point. 1313 Plantation Point? I don't think he's there now. I think either his baby's mama or another relative is living there. But his dad lives in Simmonsville, and he works at um, A-plus moving or something. They have green T-shirts. Okay. Now, have you, how many times have you met? Now, he might have, I mean, plenty of times. That's not him. Does V have long hair like that? or No, he looks like not? Kanye West. You're the second person to say that. <laughs> He's got short hair and a short beard and looks like Kanye West. Really? Hmm. Okay. So maybe his thing? name isn't Isaiah Walker, you know? Yeah. Have, have you ever called him by his name before? Yeah. And yeah. My wife did. You, she's called him Isaiah? Yeah. He didn't like it very much. He didn't like it? Why not? What do you say? Because he doesn't know? like people knowing his name. Knowing his name. He was okay. just like, all right. Hmm. All right, you got anything else for him? Um, the only other thing, going back real quick again to that that night, you, the other thing your your wife told us was that when she walked in the house, she actually picked up a couple of uh, shell casings left from when those guys came in. She said, well, basically what she told us was that they kicked in the door, you're in the bedroom, they look in the bedroom to see you blindly fire a couple of shots around the corner in your general direction and then uh, take off, basically, is, is what happened. Um, so to, to get a, a story that different from from what you've given us, it just it kind of raises questions about what's going on with that. I mean, I don't know why she thinks it happened just like that. I mean... I mean, it may not be that specific, but she did say she picked up some shell cases. Yeah, she. Yeah, I remember her picking those up. So where did where did those come? I don't know. So these guys did fire at you, or no? No. I mean, it's not gonna. <laughs> reason why I ask is it, it's not gonna change anything. We just need to know if somebody's willing to try to kill you. Then they may also be trying to kill John. Yeah, they fired at me. I just don't want y'all messing with me. And we're not here to mess with you. I already told you that. Yeah, they came. Yeah, they came through the door and fired at me. Okay. And did you fire? Did you have a gun? Did you fire? No, I hid in her closet. Put the lights out. About how many shots did they fire? Just two. Just two shots. Was your mother-in-law in the house when they were firing shots? You were alone. I was alone. Okay. Well, that's. And she showed up right after, and that's when I ended up calling 911 and saying my wife was okay. I just didn't want to, I don't know, I just didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want y'all to just, I don't know. Okay. You were untruthful with that, and I understand. Was there anything else that we discussed that you No, everything else was 100%. It's just that incident is the only thing that I was So if you did not, I mean, truthfully, you did nothing wrong there. Why would you not reveal that to us? Because I just thought that. I don't know. I, mean, I, tell me what you're I just about. thought I could maybe get in trouble somehow. I don't know. For somebody shooting at you? Or just cause me more issues or y'all to come over more. I don't know. Okay. I have a season past. I mean, I just makes me nervous. I don't know. Okay. Because it could make y'all think other things about me or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not here to do that. I I mean, I, I, all I can tell you is it made me nervous to tell you about it, and I don't know exactly why, it just did. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And, as well, if... if but if, everything else I've told you is And I believe truth, you, but as well, if you fired back, then I'm not here to say, you know what, he's not supposed to be in, you know, in possession of a gun. The reason, <laughs> the reason why we're asking about that is because it's... From, every, from everything we've been told is that Nothing was real. They didn't ransack your house. They didn't break stuff. They didn't steal stuff. So as they, they come in, they, they shoot at you. They came in, they shot. I flipped the lights off and dove in my closet and, they, and held the door shut. And they didn't, they didn't shoot into the closet? They didn't, no, they didn't I mean, know. I don't think they knew I went in the closet. Let's, let's get it straight. I mean, 
in this particular situation, you're the victim, you know, and we're here for you. You know, we don't we don't want this to happen again. If these guys come with guns and they're shooting at you, we don't want it to happen with your nine year old son. In, in the I house know, me neither. Or your wife, you know. So, so that's why I'm asking. You know, what prevents these guys from coming back is is maybe you know you're trying to protect yourself and you happen to find a gun in the house and you shoot back or whatever. I mean, that at least prevents them from coming back. Otherwise, you know, now we're concerned that these guys are going to come back. If they just shot John, now they're going to come back for you because they already shown a prone, proneness for violence. And we don't want that to happen to you or your son or your wife no, or your no, family. Either. So is there anything part of this? To me, how would me shooting back change any of that? Because it's going to scare them off. If you're going to scare them off, they're going to know that you're protect, they're protecting your house and they're not going to come back. I mean, well, I probably I would, scared them off. I would even say thing. that. Okay. Let's just say that I scared them off. Okay, you scared them off. Fair enough. All right. Did um, But I currently have no weapons or anything like that. Okay, whose weapon was that that you used to scare them off with? I didn't necessarily do that. I scared them off. That's all I want to say. Okay. You can't tell us how you scared him off? I mean, I mean, you pretty much know already, so no, I can't. I mean, you, you. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. You know, again, you're the victim in this situation. You're allowed to defend yourself, especially in your house. Do you ever hear of the Castle Doctrine? What, does it say that felons can have firearms? I don't think so. Well, what it says is that you're allowed to protect your house. Yeah. Okay. And I'm aware of that. But I don't have anything else to say. Without a lawyer. Okay. I can't. I understand. I'm not here to dig you up. All right. Um, I trust that if we have any further questions yeah. or, or if you hear anything. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely Detective let you Detective Odom's going to give you his yeah. card. Please. I mean, yeah, I, know that, I know that word on the street spreads quickly. Yeah. And if somebody starts bragging about what they right. did. You know, please, I'll definitely please let please you know. They need to be taken off the street. Um, even you know? if you want to remain anonymous and say, hey, this is where I heard. <coughs> yeah. You know, if you, if you could give us a call. It would make me feel safer. You know? Like I said, we're here to solve a homicide. We're not here to worry about drugs or anything like that. Okay. okay so if you do hear anything, please let us know. I definitely How did will. you get up here? We, we, we brought up. Yeah, they, they gave me okay, a I'll tell you what. If you, if you don't mind sitting in the uh I'm going to step outside and have a cigarette Okay. Real quick. And we'll have something to give you right back, all right? All right. I appreciate your time. I really do. Following the interviews with both Colette and Samuel, during which they invoked their right to legal representation, the police lacked sufficient evidence to detain them. Consequently, they were released. However, the situation took a significant turn shortly thereafter when Sam was pulled over for speeding and a non-functioning taillight. The subsequent search of his vehicle led to the discovery of marijuana, resulting in his arrest. A shotgun shell was also found in his pocket leading to further suspicion. With probable cause established, the police obtained a search warrant for the Collins residence, where they uncovered an empty gun safe. This development intensified the investigation. A crucial breakthrough emerged when the police examined Sam's text messages, revealing a damning communication to a friend that read, I didn't want to wake you. I put the gun in the back of your truck. It's wrapped in camo. This friend subsequently confessed to having loaned Sam a shotgun of the same caliber as the murder weapon for protection. Ballistics tests confirmed the weapon's involvement, while Sam Collins' DNA was found at multiple points on the firearm. Subsequently, both Sam and his wife were arrested, with suspicions suggesting that she had driven him to Jonathan's house, potentially implicating her in the crime. The truth eventually emerged. A highly intoxicated Colette had confessed to Sam that she had visited Jonathan's house earlier that fateful night. Consumed by jealousy and rage at the thought of his wife's potential infidelity with his friend, Sam seized the shotgun and, with drunken Colette as an unwitting accomplice, demanded, Take me to John's house. After committing the act, Sam admitted to fleeing the scene in a panic and returning to the vehicle, as testified during his trial. In October 2017, Sam Collins, aged 39, was convicted of first-degree murder and received a 50-year prison sentence. Following his conviction, 
He cooperated with the prosecution and confirmed that his wife was unaware of his murderous intentions, though she became aware of the crime afterward. Colette faced a trial for accessory to murder after the fact in January 2018, with Sam serving as the state's key witness. At the age of 36, Colette Collins received the maximum sentence of 15 years. The alleged affair between Colette and Jonathan remained unconfirmed.